Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the last day of Aromantic Spectrum Awareness Week, ASAW 2021, and welcome also to our fundraiser live stream. Um, yeah, we're so excited to have you all here. I'm going to give the stream a minute or two uh, in case we have stragglers who are trying to find the YouTube link um, or are getting water or are doing whatever it is that they're doing in prep. Um, yeah, in the meantime, the live chat should be open. I see some of you saying hi, hi to all of you as well. Um, so I can see you if you all decide to type uh, to say hi to each other or to me. Um, I'm curious uh, where in the world people are joining from, uh, if you want to throw in. Oh, thank you, yes, for the bow tie. Um, I actually would tell you where this is from, but it was a gift. Uh, so I'll have to figure that out. If anybody knows, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, we've got some USians. Um, that makes sense. Uh, your time is pretty close to my time. Um, I'm coming up from Canada. Hey, Canada. Um, so uh, I'm excited to have you all here. Um, I'll be really excited if we have people in other uh, other time zones too. Um, and I'm also going to be speaking out loud um, for those who can't see the chat since we don't have that overlay for our recording at the moment. Um, Germany, oh, awesome. Thank you for coming in. It's probably late, I'm going to say there. So thanks for tuning in. Southern US we've got. Um, we've got other people as well uh, coming in. Yeah. More US, Brazil. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you for coming in from Brazil. OK, well, uh, hi to everybody who joined in the last little bit and who will be joining. Um, happy ASAW again. Looks like we've got Australians in here. Thank you for being awake. You're brilliant. Um, I hope you're all doing well this afternoon if you're in my time zone or morning uh, or evening or middle of the night, <laughs> wherever you happen to be. Um, I'm Nair, Aureus Treasurer. I'm Halen from Canada today, um, and I'll be acting as the event host. Um, I'm a genderqueer, aerospec, gray ace. My pronouns are am airs, singular, or they, them, theirs. You can see it, I think, in this corner over here, uh, just in case you forget at any time. Um, it's great to have everyone here to have a bit of fun and support a number of arrows who help this community run. Um, huge thank you also to the members of the Aurea team who had the knowledge, time, resources, and the better internet who are helping me stream and advertise this as we speak. Y'all are great and awesome. Um, so what is this event? Um, this event is a celebration of Aromantic Spectrum Awareness Week. The point of this week really is to spread awareness of aromatic experiences broadly and also the specific diversities within and across the aromatic spectrum. Um, we're bringing together and showcasing aromantics who are out there being themselves and doing neat things. Um, that's including all of you too who exist as arrows and as allies to our broad community and the many communities around the world. So. Hello, especially to, um, to the allies who might be tuning in today. Um, we have six guests lined up today to talk to us about being arrow in their community spaces um, and or to show us what kinds of things they do, um, like creative work, uh, some art as well, essentially as arrows participating in society in their own unique ways. Um, this event is doubling as a celebration and as a fundraiser. So Aurea, the organization I'm representing today, runs on volunteer work um, and donations from both the team members and the members of the broader community. Aurea stands for the Aromantic Spectrum Union for Recognition, Education, and Advocacy. Um, for this event, we've also partnered with the Aerocalypse Forums. That's Apocalypse, but with an R for Arrow. Uh, Aerocalypse is an online forum space where a lot of us on the team actually initially met. Momo, the administrator of the forums, uh, who is up at this time in the chat too, um, will be one of our guests later on today. So she can tell you a little bit more about the nature of the forums then. But really a big part of both of our initiatives is to link aromantics together, uh, to socialize, to link up on activism, to understand one another, educate, advocate, encourage allyship, um, brainstorm, whether 
frogs or bows and arrows or ice cream or the superior arrow symbols, all that good stuff, the serious and the more fun and everything that's in between. Um, to support us in our fundraising, the link to donate is in the description below this video. It's aromanticism.org slash donate. So again, I'll spell that out. It's A-R-O-M-A-N-T-I-C-I-S-M dot O-R-G slash donate. Um, the proceeds are going to be split between us, Aurea, to help us officially register as a nonprofit organization, and also between our partners, the uh, Iraqalypse Forums, to help them with the costs of continuing to run and to host the forums. Um, no pressure to donate if you can't at the moment. Um, we're all happy to be hanging out uh, and showcasing our awesome guests during one of the most important weeks of the year for us. If you can donate, uh, you are awesome. Both we uh, and Iraqalypse would like to thank you immensely for your support. You all are really great. You keep us running. Um, so before I get us chatting with and showcasing our guests, I want to take you through our schedule um, and give you all a general summary of how to participate in this event. You can see a general time frame schedule um, down in the description below. Um, you should be able to see that at any point uh, in, the, in the live stream, um, but I'm also gonna pull up a schedule for you now um, so that you all can see at the moment, at the beginning, uh, what all we're doing. All right, there we go. I think you should be able to see that. Um, in a few minutes, we're going to be starting off with three back-to-back -back individual segments. Uh, first will be an individual conversation with Nick Hampshire on aromantic relationships. We'll get to have him for a good half hour, followed by a chat with Divinity on her experiences being an aromantic business owner. After that, we'll get to cool down a bit with the Arting Ace, um, also known as Caitlin Candy, who is going to be doing some live drawing for us. Um, I'll be monitoring the YouTube live chat as I have been so far. I have been really liking the bow tie. I'm really happy. It was a good uh, decision to wear this to this event. Um, feel free to jump in with comments uh, throughout the individual sessions. We'll try to catch you when we can. And we welcome chat requests for the drawing segment, especially. I'll give you all a rundown of what kinds of requests Caitlin will be taking when we get to her segment. Um, but for now, you know, hang in there um, and uh, I'll let you know more details then. So those three back to back sessions will take us to around 5 p.m. Eastern time um, and we'll be taking a quick break at that time. Um, grab your snacks during that break, uh, take your bathroom breaks, uh, hang out with others in the chat as well. I really encourage everybody to chat with each other um, and I especially need that bathroom break so that's why that's in there. After the break, we have uh, a half hour each with three more guests. So we'll have ASPEC of Stardust, um, who will be talking about forming ASPEC community groups. Then Shade Oyama Kinoa has a wonderful showcase of their creative work uh, in the form of a podcast excerpt as well. And then finally, we'll be finishing up with Momo, the administrator of the Iraqalypse Forums, um, talking about forums, her identities, kind of laid back conversation, um, between the two of us as individuals um, and any questions you also happen to have for her. So after that, um, we'll have another quick break for the bathroom again, a water refill, whatever it is you need at that time. Um, then we plan to all come together as a group at 7 p.m. Eastern time to play an arrow themed game of Quiplash. Um, so in case Quiplash is new to you, since it was to some of our guests, um, it's essentially a party game where you come up with quips so that's funny or interesting responses to the prompts that the game gives you. Then we all vote on whose quips are the best ones. Essentially, we all get to pick who the funniest arrow is in this space today, who the funniest arrow guest is, um, which is quite the competition. <laughs> and I admit uh, I had some advantage since I was prepping our custom arrow flavored prompts. Um, but rest assured, um, our guests today are pretty hilarious um, and they completely creamed me in our test run. So I think we'll have a great time with that and I probably won't win by default. Um, I'm not that funny, um, but they are, so you'll be fine. Um, the cool thing is that you, the audience, um, is gonna be able to participate in the game as well um, as voters. 
So we'll have also our custom episode that um, I helped create available for download if you ever want to use it yourselves in your own Quiplash games. Um, more on the game on how to join when it starts later on. So be sure to tune in for that if you do want to participate um, and uh, get in on those shenanigans with us. All right. So for some final housekeeping, um, before I start passing it off to our guests and you hear a little bit less of me rambling at you, um, since this is a live event, we've made sure to put in some buffer time to account for switching between different technologies we're using, uh, just like you saw me do earlier. Um, we thank you all for being patient with us as we do that. Um, there may also be some content uh, that we don't anticipate that might uh, trigger some repulsion or discomfort, depending on where you're coming from. Um, there might be mentions of different kinds of relationships, um, romance, mentions of sex, affection, um, love in general, discrimination perhaps, um, and also any swearing that <laughs> we might not catch. Um, we've done our best to make sure it all runs smoothly uh, and keep things relatively accessible for everybody. But keep in mind the Arrow experience really is this diverse, very variable thing as opposed to like a big blob of sameness. So we're all different people um, with different lives and ways of going about the world around us um, based on how we've grown up or are still growing up. We ask really that everybody respect our guests um, and each other really as much as possible. If you need to tune out, for any segment or um, step out for some self-care, we really encourage that. Um, we're not gonna take it personally. Um, so you do you uh, and we'll keep doing us as well. So all that said, um, in summary, you can see the description below for uh, the links to donate, the link to the uh, Rockalypse forums, um, our website as well, and the general schedule um, at any point. They'll be there throughout the live stream in the description. Um, we have information on our guests that are coming in today and where you can find them outside the stream um, in the ASAW 2021 panel on our website. So that's aromanticism.org slash ASAW hyphen 2021, but that link's also in the description. Uh, when in doubt really uh, about links and things like that, check our description um, or someone in the chat is likely to be able to help you out. I can see already that there are a couple of um, of ORIA team members that are lurking in there. Um, they'll likely be able to help you out with those kinds of things. Um, our guests themselves will also be giving you some information on where to find them on various platforms throughout the event and at the end of the event. So you'll be able to keep interacting with them and their content um, pretty easily in that way. All right, so that takes me through my housekeeping and my schedule. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to welcome our first guest, uh, who is Nick Hampshire. He is a heterosexual, aromantic photographer, model, and influencer. So let me let him in now and get him going in this conversation. Hey, Nick, I think you're muted. <laughs> I am. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Welcome. How are you today? Right. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. So far, so good. We haven't had any crazy technical difficulties yet. So fingers crossed. So my beauty fiasco. Now it's all blown. <laughs> all right. So, I mean, <laughs> welcome. Um, I remember that when we were chatting, uh, you mentioned that you wanted to go through uh, things about aero relationshiping. That was like a big topic that... Uh, um, you had a lot of enthusiasm to talk about. So, you know, feel free to take it away if you want to start with uh, um, with some kind of, uh, yeah, some kind of thoughts on essentially that era really. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, so actually, I think what uh, we wanted to do, because Divinity's on right after me, and for those that don't right. know, Divinity is uh, my partner in our queer platonic relationship. Yeah. So um, I think uh, since we kind of have an hour between the two of us, I was going to maybe do like a 20 minute um, talk about my experience with Arrow in general. And then yep. uh, she was going to do her 20 minutes. And then mm -hmm. for the last 20 minutes, her and I would come together and kind of talk about relationships Brilliant. together. 
Yeah, brilliant. For everybody else that's watching, it's really funny. <laughs> I reached out to both of these people, uh, Nick and Divinity, separately, um, not even knowing that they knew each other or were in a QPR. Um, and then in the end, they were like, oh, yeah, actually, we totally know each other and we can bounce off of this. So it's really awesome. Um, yeah. 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 So it's that's always. actually what, one of the things that I really wanted to talk about, actually, is yeah. like how how little like create uh content and creators we have for a romantic community you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. Uh, you know i joke about it man i'm like yo there's like six channels uh, on youtube about like aromanticism and like five of them are arrow ace as well you know what i mean so it's yes. like so it's just really funny that you know what i mean like you found divinity and myself because again there's just like not a ton of um content out there and creators which is crazy because yeah. i think that there's you know obviously we have a pretty like decent sized community Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just feel like there's even more people out there that are probably aromantic without realizing it because they, you know, either don't know right, or they're too scared to like question, you know, a lot of people don't want to be abnormal, you know what I mean? Or they don't want to like veer away from the norm, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's yeah, as crazy as it is, it's like easier for a lot of people to like force themselves into like boxes that they don't fit into um, than to like challenge that and like dare to step outside of it, which is, you know, really sad because obviously that hinders their quality of life, I think. Exactly. Yeah. It's um, rough. Yeah. And so, uh, and then, you know, on top of that, I, I actually just dropped a video yesterday on my YouTube. For hey. those that don't know, I didn't really do a niche job. My name is Nick Hampshire. I have a YouTube channel called Being a Romantic While Not Asexual. Mm -hmm. And um, it's kind of like important to me, I guess, to make content in that lane because, as I was saying before, um, you know, as, as little arrow content as there is already, is like seems even less for like arrow, not ace. Yeah. And uh, it can be definitely tricky. I know um, in my comments, a lot of people that are like, oh, like I found like, oh, like I started my journey. And like the first thing I came across was asexuality. And mm -hmm. so I found a bunch of a, a, like a, a stuff, like just right. a stuff. You know, there's a pretty like I feel like in the general like population, people have at least heard the term asexual, even if they don't right. know what it means. Or a lot of times they have a misunderstanding of what it means, but mm -hmm. they've at least heard the term, you know. Yeah. Um, and so I feel like people on their way to figuring out that their arrow find ace first, you know, <clears throat> and then, um, and so I feel like they find ace and they hear people's content and they're like, well, that kind of sounds like me, but like, not, not really, you know, and then they might find an arrow ace page. And so they're like, okay, well that sounds more like me, but like, that's right. still not me, you know, not quite exactly my yeah. experience. Yeah. 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 And then, um, you know, and then, so that was kind of me. And like, when I started, like I put my mm. first video up on uh, YouTube, maybe I think it's like three years old now. Mm. And um, it, it was just like, you know, I, I, I'm mostly known for my Instagram. I do modeling photography and stuff like that. Like I'm not right. a big, um, you know, I was never really like a part of the LGBTQA plus community, like mm. growing up or like even through most of my adulthood or anything right. like that. So like my page really wasn't anything about pride or like, you know, promoting the community um, mm -hmm. or anything like that. So, um, but as I figured out I was Arrow and people were telling me I was part of the community now, um, I, I just wanted to raise more awareness about aromanticism because I knew that my life was way more like, I don't want to say like less stressful once I knew it was Arrow, but cause like, you know, I, I just didn't like get into relationships that much. Like, well, I knew pretty early on that I was not um, experiencing what everybody else was experiencing, you know? Mm. And so I was like, you know, I wonder if this is like a trauma thing, even though, you know, mm. to my, rem my, my memory, I didn't ever had any kind of trauma or anything. Um, right. But I was like, you know, I wonder if I'm like broken or if there's something wrong with me. Yeah. Um, but it really wasn't causing problems. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah. I wasn't super interested in being in a relationship. Um, I'm pretty romantic repulsed. So I was like, you know, maybe this is a problem, but I really, it's not causing many problems for today. So, right, you know, if, right. if it's something that I need fixed, I will fix it whenever it becomes a problem. That's um, later Nick's problem. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but like it never was. And then, you know, it wasn't until maybe I was like 26, 27 that I learned about a romanticism and I was like, Oh shit. Like that's, that's it. You know, like for mm -hmm. me, I always tell people to me, it was like, like my a romanticism, I think was like, uh, knowing my way around a dark room really, really well. And then mm -hmm. like learning aromanticism, like was a thing is like turning the light switch on, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. I kind of already knew what was going on. I could navigate it like, you know, pretty, pretty well. But right. like once the light was on, I was like, oh, like this all makes like way more sense now, you know? Right, right. You got like that extra bit, right? You had a little bit of an understanding of what was going on, but then having the light on, it's like an additional visual to what you yeah. were already feeling. You're like, ah, yes, the word, right? Yeah, um, exactly. But, and to, yeah. and to just know that other people, like that it's not like a, it's not a me thing. It's like, yeah. it, it's like a human thing. You know I mean? Other humans yes. are experiencing it too. 
because you know even when you first heard about it i feel like you know my brain at least was kind of like wait like what are the odds that i would be this thing that nobody else that i know seems to be you know it's yes. like what i don't understand um but uh but you know the more people that i found especially that's what was great about the community is finding more people like, oh, okay so it's not like that uncommon i'm not like that weird you know right um, yeah. and it just makes you feel more valid and, and it, i think before that you know what i mean you'd have those fits where you'd be like okay like should I think about this? Like, is it, is it something going on? Is it something that I need to address? Do I need yeah. to read books or see a therapist, whatever? And then like, you just realize, oh no, like this is just how some people are. Like, it's fine. Yeah. It's just a diversity in human experience, right? Exactly. Right. You know? Definitely. And, um, education. Yeah. So the first video I made was about three years ago and it was just because like, I do a lot of like interact with my fans and stuff on uh, yeah. Instagram. Mm -hmm. And so I would kind of talk about it somewhat often and people would ask me questions and then like my initial video um, wasn't really planned to be like a, a series or anything. Uh, if you if you go to my YouTube, the first video looks nothing like the rest of the videos because right. it was just like a one off. I was just like, hey, I'm just gonna do this thing one time, just to put it out there so I can reference people to it. Yeah. It actually, uh, but you know, to be honest, that first video still is like I know it's been out the longest, but it still gets the most traction too. It's got like thirty thousand views, and I yeah. still get probably the most comments on that video than mm. anything else, which is unfortunate because. <laughs> uh, Obviously, my knowledge about aromanticism and my own experience is much more informed these days. Um, my experience or my uh, technique at like bringing the visuals and stuff is a lot right. better now. The audio is yep. terrible in that video. Uh, but most importantly <laughs> is, and I keep getting or occasionally I'll get comments about it and I feel terrible, uh, is I start off the video, um, you know, I explain what aromanticism is, but I, I often and still do to this day uh, when talking to people that don't know about aromanticism, yep. find it very helpful to explain asexuality first because people mm. seem to understand like what sexual attraction is versus right. what it isn't versus like what romantic is. You mean like what's what's sexual is typically a bit mm. more objective than what is and isn't romantic, you know? Mm. Um and they already usually have at least some modicum of uh, for a frame of reference for asexuality. So, yeah. So in, the, in that video, I start off by kind of explaining what asexuality is. And unfortunately, at the time, I had a very uh, bad understanding of what asexuality was. So every oh, now and then, no. I get like, <laughs> yeah. So like, the, you know, within the first like three, four minutes of that video, I kind of like, step off on the wrong foot for the ace community, and I feel so bad. Um, right. And I, and honestly. I was uh, trying to promote this week just some arrow stuff, and I was like, you know what? Like, I don't necessarily want to promote that video because of that issue and some of the other mm. uh, reasons I mentioned. But I was like, oh, but like all my other videos don't really explain what arrows. Like, the rest of the videos are kind of for they're kind of for arrows. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, hey, you already yeah. know the basics. Like, here's yeah. the nitty gritty. You know? We so skip the one really, one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. I was thinking um, as I was like looking for a video to post or, or to reference people to, I was like damn, I should probably make like a new, like, what mm. is Arrow video? Like, you An know, the, now that I'm better versed on it, I can better yeah. speak to like Ace, the Ace community. And yeah, uh, yeah and just, you know, give people a better, like, um, better understanding than, than that original video did. Right. Um, but yeah, so the series has been really cool. I just really uh, enjoy making the content. Honestly, like the quarantine was a big part of it because I had mm. an abundance of time on my hands right? and uh, needed something to pour creativity into. Yep. And yep. I just felt like, um, and again, I, I was really noticing a, a lack of just people speaking to my experience specifically. And I knew there were yeah. people looking for that experience. Yeah. So I just was like, you know, let me just make it, I guess. You know what I mean? I know that I'm a relatively articulate person. I know that that's mm -hmm. a skill set of mine and I have the tools right. to make the content so like yeah. let's just do it you know exactly yeah well getting it getting that resource too and getting it right right that's a really good point where you've got like this resource that people keep coming back to right but is not quite polished in some areas right like you're always mm -hmm. a growing arrow too I'm sure that there are years down the line that you'll be like ah this experience is like I understand it better and it's more nuanced than what I thought it was so going in and and looking at that kind of old stuff but also still seeing how it is useful anyway for a lot of other people like it's really interesting I can imagine to yeah to definitely interact with that yeah. yeah yeah and it's uh it's just been really cool to see like you know there's a lot of I think aspects to being arrow before you know what aromanticism is or before you've interacted with the community where you're like um you're just like oh like is this, is it just me or like yeah i just you know you talk to like you know you're at your immediate friends right and you're like yeah. asking them about their experience um or yeah. you're trying to tell them about your experience and yeah. like it's like there's clearly a disconnect right it's like i don't know what y'all are experiencing but that's not what i'm experiencing yeah or you're explaining what you're experiencing and they're like oh yeah that's like this you know and you're like it's not like that though yeah. And, uh, yeah. and so I feel like you just really, um, 
stuck on your own kind of thinking like, oh, I guess this is just like B stuff, you know, like, I guess I just got to mm-hmm. figure it out my own. And then you, when you like find the community and you like see somebody else um, speak to an issue, like the first time I actually, like I, I learned about aromanticism. I knew I was arrow. That was kind of enough for me. I didn't need like a community. I didn't like immediately search out Facebook groups. I was mm-hmm. never like, I don't know. I didn't need that. Like I was very comfortable even without the title, like I was saying earlier, like I didn't, mm. I didn't need no, it was arrow. I already knew something was a little off, right. but I was like, whatever. It's just me. I don't care. Mm-hmm. When I mm-hmm. learned it was arrow again, that was very like affirming to myself, but it, I, I didn't feel like I needed the community necessarily or anything. Mm. I didn't know if there was yep. one either. It just, right. I don't know. It didn't occur to me to look for others. I was just like, just to know that there were others was enough. For me, that know? was a big deal. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And there's a um, difference too. Oh, yeah. So, but then, yeah. but like the first time that like I met somebody, it was actually funny. I was on a date from, um, on OK, OK Cupid, OK Cupid. And um, okay, good. <laughs> I was, uh, you know, and, and whenever I meet like a new person, potential partner or anything like that, um, I always is pretty much as soon as possible kind of get to the, like the, oh, so what are you looking for? Oh, hey, like I'm, you know, I'm a romantic. That means this, you know what I mean? Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and she was like, oh, you know, that's kind of like, I feel like I can kind of relate to that. You know, she, she's a Gemini. She's like, I call it my Gemini switch where I would just like <laughs> start dating somebody. And then all of a sudden I'm just like, totally not interested. I'm like, I mean, it could be that, or you could just be a romantic. <laughs> and like, that's and, a thing. Uh, that's know, a more, legit experience. Talk, you know, and she started explaining her experience before I had gotten to, and it was like the first time I'd ever heard somebody, not me, explain like my exact like things that I had said that nobody else had said and I was just like, hey. like that's what like that's amazing like I can't believe other people are experiencing the same things that like I never thought I would get to like share with somebody else you know yeah so that was like one of the coolest things uh I think well like kind of opened my mind to, like oh like maybe being like part of the community is cool you know like maybe I should reach out to more um and that's when I you know I started talking about it more and stuff like that mm-hmm. um and so it's been cool um I will say like you know, amongst us arrows, like, um, actually, uh, if you don't mind, I'll talk a little bit about just like, yeah, go for it. Uh, like the, the interacting with community, um, arrows specifically, and then also the LGBT community as a whole, right. um, amongst us arrows, I think, um, as you said, it's very diverse and a lot of people are arrow ace and, yeah. you know, I have run into issues in like some, um, forums or groups or whatnot where like, uh, you know, because there's arrow ace people there, even even in groups where it's been, as far as I can tell, the headline alone says aromantic. Right. So as far as I knew, I'm like, okay, so this is like strictly aromantic, but then ace people would kind of just be like, oh, well, you can't talk about that, like sex or anything like that here. Mm. There's ace people here. And, right. and like, in my mind, I'm like, well, then shouldn't that be like its own subset? Like if it's arrow mm. and then you're arrow ace, that's like a subset. So like, shouldn't mm. y'all have your own thing? And, you know, right. and I'm, I'm, I, I hate to promote division, obviously, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think like, you know, I don't like hacking to split us all up into uh, different spaces because, like, you're already in a smaller group of space, right? Yeah, and it's then, already so small. It's already yeah, so hard and then to find. Like, okay, so now we need an even further subset, you know what I mean? And, like, yeah, and I'm not trying to shame accessible. anybody who you know, feels uncomfortable or repulsed by sex talk and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I get the, the need for it, but it was just kind of confusing for me because, again, I, I thought I was entering spaces about aromanticism specifically because there was no mention of ACE. And then right. it, it, it seems like the ACE was implied. And I was like, mm. that kind of seems messed up, you know? Well, it's difficult. Yeah, because you you almost you want to have everybody be talking about all of their experiences. Right. But then air, the air experience is so diverse. You've got people who will be sex repulsed, who will mm-hmm. be sex favorable, who will be romance repulsed and romance favorable. Mm-hmm. Right. The arrows who uh, have like ace as like another experience that they have, who have all experiences, who have other queer experiences or not even any other queer experiences. Right. That they're just arrow uh, and, and are not sure. Um, how to interact with the people that um, that may have like be triggered or uncomfortable by yeah. um, what they're talking about. So it's difficult because we're already a small community, like you said. But you know, promoting more division is is going to be so difficult for everybody to to find those spaces. But on the other hand, cultivating those spaces that people are comfortable in that, um, or even putting up like a um, some kind of warning that like, hey. This is this is what we're going to be talking about in terms of content. Um, it's something that I think is really important to keep in mind. And beyond the repulsion and discomfort in terms of romance and sex as well, there are like other kinds of content that people just have uh, triggers for that will be different for every single person. So there's like a a balance almost between community responsibility to be open to all of those experiences and not like you said have like an ace-centric view when going into groups um but yeah. also also some responsibility on the individual going in to make sure that like that space that they're going into is as advertised right um so it's 
it's difficult. It's a, it's a difficult sort of thing. Yeah. I'm curious how you've like, how you've wrapped your head around that, how you've gone about that and going into those different communities. How has that um, affected you? How have you been able to? Um, um, there are like, a, like a, I mean, most of the time I pop in, um, I've, I've never really been like a big Facebook groups person. Like I'm not one that like mm. uh, exists or like hangs out in them very often. Uh, most right. times I've gone in um, kind of just to um, push my videos and stuff like that, which yep. uh, I guess can kind of seem self-serving, but it's really, you know, if you look at the rest of my social media, it's more like about like me and my career. The Aero stuff really is like just for the community. Like I, I really... Mm you know, I'm not trying to leverage the arrow stuff into my career that much. Like I don't like right. try to like, like blanket myself in arrow as like the hair, the arrow champion by any means. Like it's really right. not something I'm trying to do mm -hmm. for, for self-serving purposes. You know, it, it's really right. just like, I make these videos because I feel like people could use them and I feel like they can be helpful. And I just want them to reach as many people as possible. Um, right. Because I see like, you know, like when people respond to my, my work, my, my social media stuff, or whatever, um, on like photography and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. it warms my like artistic heart for sure. But like yeah. to my arrow stuff are like, yo, I'm in tears right now because yeah. I feel connected for the first time, you know, whatever. And like that stuff is like, it's just such so different. So, um, you know, I, I do wonder, I, I do um, fear that uh, occasionally somebody might, might see me as like a self-serving person because I usually just kind of like mm -hmm. pop in, drop my videos and dip, whatever. Um, but it really is. I'm just like, hey, guys, like I made this for you. I hope it helps somebody out there, you know? Right, um, like somebody that was like how I was, right? Yeah, uh, for yeah. You, right, like yeah. something that you would have wanted when you were coming in, just somebody to, to say that their experiences are like yours. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will say uh, one one issue that I had, in, um, and I guess this was more of like a me thing. I think you and I kind of talked about this once before, but yeah. um, is like uh, I ran into an issue where I was trying to discuss an issue, and this was something else I kind of wanted to touch on too. Yeah. Is, you know, the, the inclusion of aromantics in the greater LGBTQA plus mm -hmm. community, right? And this big, yes, rainbow. Yes, right exactly. Yeah. And, um, and like for me, like I, I've gone into groups and like some groups are like, you know, we are a part of the community. It's a non-discussion. Don't bring it up because it's offensive to even mention. And I'm like, mm. okay, like I, I, I feel like a lot of people that go for that, like automatic shut the conversation down are probably... All, uh, already in the community because of like a different cross section like they're mm. also like queer or lesbian or gay or something like that so like mm -hmm. they're kind of already included and then like they're but like as a person that lived like 26 years mm -hmm. as just an ally I was entirely on the outside mm -hmm. you know just just supporting um it's a confusing matter you know what I mean like it, it's, yeah. it's a weird spot for me to be in as a cis heterosexual guy mm -hmm. um to enter a space that you know traditionally I would be seen as kind of an outside and be like oh yeah like just because i love somebody different or like don't love somebody like whatever like you guys have to accept me in your community like it just feels like obtrusive for me you know mm -hmm. so like i i personally i kind of more so like default to whatever like somebody else thinks is like cool like i'm not going to argue if you if i'm saying uh you know hey like air is a part of the lgbt community and somebody really staunchly is like well no you're not i'm you know, like okay and then if they are like oh you are i'm like okay you know like i'm not I, I, I'm not trying to cause a, a fight about it, but I, I do right. want the ability to discuss it because it is a very pertinent, like, part. That's probably the most, like, confusing part of the whole Aero experience for me is that inclusion, right. to be honest. Um, yeah. and, and being able to discuss it is kind of an important part for me. And I went mm. into a, a, a group uh, called, I'm going to name check it, I don't care, uh, called <laughs> Aero Talk. And, uh, and, I'm, and I'm not trying to dog the, uh, the admin. That she's, uh, there's only one admin and, and I think um, You're great. I kinda, thank you for the space. Yeah. Yeah, no. And I'm, I'm really appreciative of her. And I, and I came in and uh, I posted a couple of videos and um, they like, none of them had made, had made it into the feed. And um, I was just curious. I, you know, I, I inquired uh, to the admin um, about mm. why they had it. And I was like, yo, is it like a self-promotion thing? Cause like, I can understand, like, that's not what I'm doing it for, but I can understand, you know, I just want to know like how come none of them made it. And she was like, Oh, well, are they, I'm not, I don't remember they pronounce it, uh, but regardless, they, um, we're like, oh, um, I'm the only admin, so I have to look at everything. So, like, for picture posts mm -hmm. or text posts, it's easy. But videos, I have to watch the whole thing to make sure that the content is adequate right. and safe. So um, so that's why I just haven't gone to it. Um, mm -hmm. But I went through and I've approved your videos. I was like, all right, cool. And then I noticed that my conversation, I did a whole video about the inclusion of aromantics in the right. alphabet. And um, and they were like, oh, I won't. I didn't uh, accept that one because that topic is not allowed in this in this group. And I was mm -hmm. and to me, I just felt like that was like, pretty harsh censorship i was like mm. i i understand how that can get um hot tempered quickly you know what i mean um yes 
but like to not be able to discuss it at all seems like uh, very unhelpful. You know what I mean? It, it is an issue within the community um, mm. that to me needs to be addressed. Just not addressing it and just pretending it's fine seems problematic, you know? Yeah. And well, um, it's, it, it's similar to a point that you were making before, right? That like there almost need to be spaces to talk about these things because for some people that's like a very like real triggering conversation, right? For them, their aromanticism alone is something that makes them queer. Whereas for other people, it doesn't because their experience of aromanticism is different, right? And right. their other intersections, like what you were saying, right? They feel more like disconnected uh, from the queer community, the broader one at least. Um, so it's difficult because you want to have those conversations, but you also want to make sure that you're not promoting like exclusion or adding fuel to other people who don't want aromantics, for example, but as part of right. your community when they can be and they should be in many different cases. So it's, yeah, it's a really tr tricky topic to, to talk about because it's been so wrapped up in discourse. It's been so wrapped up in really negative, really triggering feelings that, um, uh, a lot of care needs to be taken in and, you know, admins and stuff, right? It makes complete sense for them to say, you know what? I don't have the capacity to be able to handle this kind of conversation. Um, but you're right. Where's the space to have that conversation, those kinds of conversations about tr triggering topics, right? Things that yeah. make people uncomfortable that are deep. Especially with a group called They Were Meant to Talk. I was just kind of like taken yeah. aback because I had just, again, like I, I just had a lack of experience in groups, you know? So I, I kind of was mm -hmm. like, I was... Um, uh, I, I was a bit curt, but I wasn't, I wasn't rude as far as I remember anything, but I was kind of like, isn't that like a censorship? You know, I was, I was like being firm on my, on my stance of it, you know? Mm, um, mm. But it turns out I was just, I guess, inexperienced in Facebook groups. So I, I you know, mm. I guess that like, I understand that she was doing it by her or they were doing uh, the admin by themselves and that's a lot of work. Um, but yeah, I, I, it was just like a concern of mine where I was like, you know, I, I, another example where I found it difficult to, mm -hmm. To, you know, to talk about my experience and stuff, you know, and, and I felt as though people that were, I, you know, I brought it up in another group asking if that kind of like right. censorship or whatever was like, I thought other people would have an issue with it. And other people were like, no, it sounds like you're the problem. Cause like, if you don't like mm -hmm. that group, you could go to another group. And I was like, I mean, I know I can't, I wasn't, I wasn't I'm saying that they don't, they can't do that. I'm just saying like, is that okay? And people seem mm -hmm. like, I kind of felt like that people were like waiting for me to say something like really offensive or bothersome so they could like mm -hmm. really go off on me. And yeah. so, yeah, so just fitting in with like the arrow group itself can be kind of troublesome. And then yeah. the, the bigger group itself, LGBT, uh, QA plus community that's as well. another thing. Um, yeah. Can be kind of Two tricky. Two different steps. Yeah. So, um, uh, so yeah, that's just some of the problems I've had. But like interpersonally, like one-on-one -on -one and stuff like that, and for the most part, it's been really great. I've been really having a good time just making content and people have been super supportive. My channel is yeah. pretty much almost entirely just full of people that are really happy to have content that I'm making. And um, yeah, it's been really nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I think we're at a, around 20 minutes now. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to pass it yeah, off. So. Yeah. So thanks so much for coming in for that part. I think there are a lot of really good topics that you've touched on already and just the experience that a lot of different things that people, arrows, especially when they're coming into the community new, are going to be struggling with, right? Their, yeah. their identities, how it, it relates to the people around them, how it relates to queer people around them, and then even broader to society. So those are all really cool things. It's really great to hear some of your experiences specifically. Um, yeah, thanks again for, for coming in. And I'll see you like soon later uh, after, yeah. after we get Divinity um, over. I think I'll still say my name if you want to switch to. <laughs> Uh, if you don't get, I don't well, know. I didn't know. Yeah, I know. Uh, sorry, we're trying to figure out the logistics. So she's <laughs> no worries. Right next to me. Uh, yep. But if she jumps on mine, it'll still say Nick Hampshire. So. Oh yeah, I can introduce uh, if, you properly. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Um, I'm gonna go through all the comments. If anybody was like, I see a few people were commenting, but we kind of got lost in combo. Um, if anybody has any questions or whatever, yep. I'm gonna try to respond before we get off of here. Um, yep. You can find me on YouTube, Nick Hampshire. Yep. Um, my, my channel is like unofficial, I guess, called Being Aromantic While Not Asexual. Um, and you can also find me on Instagram um, under the same name, Nick Hampshire. So um, thanks so much for having me on, guys. I'll see you in a little bit. Yeah, of course, of course. Okay. She's joining right now. Give her just a sec. <laughs> no problem. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, okay. I'm going to pop off. She'll be on in a second. Okay. All right, see you guys in a sec. Thanks. I can figure your group. Oh, there we go. All right, so as Nick said, next up we've got Divinity. Um, and uh, I'll give her a brief little intro um, while she gets set up. Um, essentially, she's an aromantic, bisexual, gray ace entrepreneur and multi-potentialite. Um, that's uh, the 
multipotential, like meaning doing lots and lots of really cool different things all at once. So a very well-rounded person doing a lot of different things. Um, she's really neat. Uh, you heard her a little bit um, uh, when Nick was speaking um, and we'll have her on uh, soon talking about uh, being an aromantic and navigating business while doing that. Um, in the meantime, I'll have, um, yeah, all of you, as Nick said, um, you can definitely chat in the chat. <laughs> it seems like there are a lot of really cool chat already going on, um, even between you all. Um, yeah, it's a very difficult topic sometimes, uh, some of these um, that we came up with. Um, their experiences, um, the experiences that Nick was talking about, all these different ones, right, being an arrow, you know, full stop uh, and having to navigate what that means in a society that's very not friendly to arrows uh, versus uh, being arrow in the arrow spaces and being a specific kind of arrow, right? Being an ace arrow, being an owl arrow, being an arrow that's just arrow, being an arrow uh, of any other kind of um, background, right? Um, there's that kind of navigation that has to go on in community spaces. And then there's being arrow um, in the queer community where you've got a lot of different um, people, different opinions as well. Um, some people who are very harsh and very intense, others who are um, not as much, but equally passionate on the other end. Um, you've got people who aren't really sure where their place is. Um, talking about those kinds of things is important um, in the community um, so that we can yeah, get to know each other a little bit more and get to doing the kind of activism that we want and need to be doing. All right, well, it looks like Divinity's um, coming in. Um, so we'll have her up. Hey! All right, hold on, you're connecting to audio. All now right, here you go. Yeah, I love your hair, Divinity. It's Thank awesome. You. <laughs> You're amazing. Oh, been, you went like all hard on the arrow. Bow tie. Your bow Thank tie, you. Bow ties are cool. Yes, they are very cool. Uh, I agree. Well, so welcome. Um, awesome. Thank, Thank you. you for coming in. Yeah. Um, well, so today I remember when we were chatting, you wanted to talk about your experiences, essentially being an arrow and especially with the business that you've been launching. And also like being an arrow bisexual. I feel like as I talked about um, this event on my stories, I did a lot of yep. questions about that and people wanted to like know about my experience mm. that way. And Absolutely. I have no, because I Great. ramble. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, don't worry. <laughs> so we're all ramblers for some reason on this yeah. screen, but uh, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, go um, ahead, go right ahead. Okay, so thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. Um, yeah. I'm Divinity. I am a bisexual, aero, romantic, mm -hmm. repulse, gray, ace, queer cocktail of a person. <laughs> um, which, you know, it's kind of weird to me because I was brought up very traditional Christian. Like, mm. the person that I am today should just, like, not be who I am, like, based on how I was raised to be or whatever. So it's always, like, really funny to me um a little bit about myself i'm a donut enthusiast a boba addict and um a really uh, enthusiastic tiktoker or whatever <laughs> i make a lot of um well i don't want to say a lot but i make a romantic um tiktok on um, tiktok content on my tiktok whatever and i do videos on youtube and um post them on my igtv or whatever so that's where you can find all of my stuff under officially divinity um, yeah, so finding I'm new to the community. I found out or discovered I was a romantic after I met this person on the internet. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we were literally on a date on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Incredible, the, the arrow experience. Ever. Um, prior to meeting him though, I had always kind of felt like, um, I would tell people my attachment style was different because mm. I was still trying to figure myself out as to why I couldn't make that like love connection or fall head over heels for someone. Of course, like I said, being brought up traditional Christian, like I was groomed to be like, wait for your husband and God's got a plan for your life and you're going to marry someone mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And I just knew that sounded awful to me, but okay. also like, you know, when you're indoctrinated from a very young age, like from the age of three, it's just something that seems so normal and something that you seem, it seems like you should pursue that because that's what everyone does, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was already um, having problems like 
I would say, well, what I thought was problems, because I'm speaking mm-hmm. before I knew I was aromantic. Right. So problems. I was already, yeah, I was having problems. Mm-hmm. Um, connecting with others on that level, like I would get as far as, you know, like best friendship, but anything outside of that, I would just become completely unhappy in relationships, mm. like, like, like depressed, like sad, mm. crying for days, going to therapy. Cause I'm just like, I should be happy. Like nothing is wrong. Like what is right. happening, you know, it's like the closer and more intimate and romantic that relationship would get. I just couldn't do it. You know, I yeah. just I couldn't like, I was the queen of like, let's break up. I need a break you know, let's be friends. Like, yeah. you know, I was like, and I would just try to explain myself to people by saying like, oh, my attachment style was different because I had never heard of a romanticism. I hadn't seen any content around it. And that's why I, I try to like pump out as much content about it as possible. Because for me, finding out that I was aromantic was literally life changing as a person who like went to therapy and was like trying to figure myself out and just like felt further broken because I felt like nothing was working. Mm-hmm. Finding out I was aromantic was just like the best thing that literally like ever happened to me. Like, it of course, there's things. I yes, think. right. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like, like in a moment, I was like, I'm cured. <laughs> like, all the questions, all the like, you know, staying up late at night with existential dread of like, oh, what is happening with my life and why can't yeah. I do? Why can't I do the thing? Like, all of that was just like completely gone or whatever. Yeah. And then, um just to speak to like my bisexuality a bit so bisexual as in you know bleep the binary um i i I love everyone the same and that's i feel like my aromanticism has really it goes like hand in hand with my bisexuality because like there's just like an even feels like my attraction Mm. to people is just it's the same all Mm. the way around there's no height or depth it's just there's just it's there's it's just the same like there's in different no, ways yeah both of them like the air yeah like but I guess for me bi. like yeah. when it comes to like you know binary or what I find attractive because being great ace I am sex favorable but I mm-hmm. just don't experience sexual attraction as much um as I would like honestly because I, I would really <laughs> like to <laughs> you know like I see That'd like great people and I'm like and my brain is like no no we, it's just not there, you know, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> like the picture and keep going. <laughs> Relatable. Uh, it's like that scene in Finding Nemo where it's like, it's trying to speak to me. I know it. Like, that's kind of like, you know, how it feels to me where it's just like, it's aesthetic attraction. You're yeah. trying to make it something that it's not and it's just not Whoa. that. So um, yeah. given that I don't experience that that much, um, I just, I, I, I already knew, I feel like early on that I didn't have a romantic attraction to women, Mm -hmm. um, which of course you can imagine how that sounds on a date (laughs) when you're trying to tell them like, oh no, I don't experience romantic attraction to women. Like, you know, we can hang out though if you're interested. And they're just like, douchebag. (laughs) I'm just like, not knowing I'm aromantic. So I can't really explain like, you know, I didn't have the vocabulary to talk about like what I was feeling or whatever. Um, But with with, um, like masculine or masculine presenting or male partners, Mm -hmm. I, I tried to pursue that because again, being indoctrinated into that, like that's what I was supposed to do. Right, you know, right. like that's how it's supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and then finally just like let go of all of that. And then finding out that I was aromantic was like really awesome because it really made sense of like what it feels like for me to be bisexual as well. It's just like yeah. my affection or attraction to everyone is the same. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it just yeah. feels the same. So mm-hmm. I was like, pretty cool um as a business owner yes tell um, us about that it's been really interesting um going into business and being aromantic because I guess I didn't realize until after like you know trying to get to the part where I'm advertising and running sales with the holidays and stuff how much like advertisers rely on a sense of like buy this so you can look good for your special someone Mm. or you know um (laughs) valentine's day sales like you know what (laughs) what do you want to do with that and then like for me it just feels icky being a a, like a romantically repulsed person to try to promote those things in those ways knowing that that's not my moral ground like i i Mm. don't experience that so how like, how could I try to make money off of it? You know, yeah, so how can I, you market I, it. Yeah. And how can I market it? Right. So like, hmm. I feel like I am 
sort of rewriting in a sense, like a playbook, you know, for, and from a perspective that I haven't, like I'm, I'm, I'm making it up as I go, you know, like for Valentine's day, instead of doing, you know, like a, a love sale and promoting it, like right. look good for that special someone, like yeah. as an aromantic person, everyone is special. I don't have a special someone, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> so I'm not going to promote that because it's like, I know that there are people out there like me and I, you know, I really desire to make a business that champion people who are um, not represented, you know, not represented yeah. well, at least anyway. So right, right. I did a self-love sale instead of doing um, a, a Valentine's Day sale. So it's just like, treat yourself, buy something for yourself, make yourself feel good, whatever, whatever. Right, um, right. So I thought that was really nice or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I think like moving forward, like even when it comes to like the holidays and stuff, Right. Everything is pretty much centered around doing something for your special someone. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm going to have to try to find a way to market my business that feels honest to who I am and mm-hmm. that other aromantic people will see it and feel like, you know what, that's, I feel seen. Like, you know, right. even yeah. if I'm not interested in buying my product, but just to yeah. show like, you don't have to rely on that trope or whatever to like yeah. be successful. If you are a person who is, a romantic or asexual and you're trying to go into business and may be repulsed by that like just trying to write a playbook to be like there's ways around it you know like yeah, you don't have to way go do that it. route to be successful in yeah. mainstream media or whatever the case is. yeah exactly <laughs> you're like trying to inject like some di- diversity really into it because yeah, like if you sure. are favorable and happy about those kinds of things you know there's so much out there for you but for those exactly people, but also but- to create a space for people who you know, may not have that experience. Yeah, exactly. And being true to your experience too. Like, I think that that's like a really powerful message to be sending, right? Like making your business and and marketing your business in a way that's very like transparent in a way, right? Like honest and true um, uh, to you as a person. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, good luck. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) You're doing amazing work. I hope that other people as well band together with you and help support you in that as well um, yeah that, people yeah. have been very supportive and very like you know championing me on like, as I'm like trying to do things my way and like advertise my way and you know um do all those things <laughs> sorry I'm over too shy getting a little behind the scenes over here yeah yeah, yeah. um I think as well as a black woman um mm-hmm. who really isn't I mean like now we're seeing more awareness and more like representation around like black aro ace people Mm -hmm. um i feel like our experiences may differ in the sense of like the culture that we are raised in Mm -hmm. um like i like i said to uh, you know most of the time it's like christian or just like super traditional like get you a husband get have some kids like you know like the hetero exactly there's a playlist that's already like kind of mapped out for our lives or whatever Mm -hmm. and then too i think um one of the things I experienced that I almost feel like is a microaggression is like, Mm. if you present yourself like, oh, as an attractive person, people automatically assume that like you're in search of a partner. Like, you know, like you're in search of like that kind of like romantic, whatever. Like I get so many DMs all the time. I'm just like, why you ain't married yet? Oh boy. Why you ain't like, you, you too fine not to be. And it's just like, that assumption is just so annoying i had yep. someone like cuss me out on my facebook one time because i posted a post about how happy i was to be single mm-hmm. and like he's like that's why you're gonna die alone and <laughs> it was just like that like i just i feel like that's something that before i knew it was a romantic like had i had the vocabulary then to kind of like let that person know you know <laughs> yeah. i really educated them exactly um, but like I feel like he, I, I I appreciate the community now of like mm-hmm. the aromantic community because I have a place where I can be myself and not experience those types of expectations yeah. or aggressions based on how I present myself or how I look. And I think right. that it's so wrong that people have um, basically like an expectation of how an aromantic person should look and how they should speak or how they should act or how they should dress or what they should be into or anything like that, because it's Mm -hmm. such a diverse and amazing spectrum of people who are having similar, but also very different experiences, you know? So I just like, um, I feel like if you're out there and you're aromantic 
Like don't, even, even with the label of aromanticism, like you have to still be unique and show your most authentic self because somebody out there who does not look like a type, a, you know, stereotype of what people expect us to look like or experience yeah. are looking for themselves and looking for permissions to looking for permission to be themselves. So yeah. like the more authentic you are, the more you that you are, you're just going to like give other people permission to liberate themselves in their own exactly. way and not right. try to fit into a box, you know, yeah. because of a label. Yeah. And you make a very good point there, right? Because aromanticism, like as much as we're trying to gain, I guess, um, and educate, like, gain, oh, what's the word, reputation in a way, or at least visibility. <laughs> Representation, maybe? <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, thank you. <laughs> Sometimes English is, is funky, but yeah. Um, yeah, as much as we're trying to do that, right, there is also this, like, danger of, of uplifting one kind of aromantic experience, yes. right? Um, and there are so many, there are as many types of aromantic experiences as there are aromantic people, right? Um, yes. And a lot of people who are even similar in certain ways um, will also like have small minute differences in terms of how they look, mm -hmm. right? Or um, what kinds of things they're doing in their lives, um, just the other intersections of their identities that they have too, right? For sure. Um, so you I get challenged a lot, I feel like as a bisexual, just like how can you be bisexual and aromantic? Mm. And again, like I said earlier, it just, it actually makes sense to me because it's like, oh, I feel the same about everyone. People yep. are people to me. Like while people yep. ascribe differentiation of like what they are attracted to and what they're not or right. you know what they want to date or what they don't everything mm -hmm. is the same playing field for me right. um and I've had to explain I guess that like over and over I'm actually in the works of like making a YouTube video about <laughs> just, it here um, you, you go know, yeah right just like here's the link go <laughs> like and subscribe yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> at that point <laughs> at that point for sure but yeah, yeah just um another thing I feel like getting challenged about and I don't know if we're probably approaching our 20 minutes yet yeah. now oh, yeah. soon yeah I'm like a okay minutes. um yeah. segue getting yes. <laughs> <laughs> about is like um I remember I made a video on my TikTok about you know how queer platonic relationships are valid and mm -hmm. if you are a romantic or a spec or any type of queer and want a partnership then mm -hmm. that's completely valid and like the first comment was just like, if you're aromantic, why do you want a partner? Mm, right. And I was like, oh, uh, unpacking this. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you go, honestly. That's awesome. I was like, let me strengthen my thumbs because I'm going to need to type a lot. <laughs> oh, wow. No, yeah. um, I just like, you know, sometimes I ask people to ask themselves why they're asking that question because it could be mm. that they are triggered you know, because right. they don't desire that or may not understand someone's reasoning for, you know, having mm -hmm. a partner or whatever, but like, it's just a label. Like yeah. that's, that's like any other thing in life. It's just a word. It, yeah. The meaning ascribed to it is only defined by the two people who made the agreement yeah. of it. And exactly. that's it. So, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's flexible in that way. And that's why it, it exists. Right. But right. Um, yeah, getting the comment of like, but oh, yeah. but this is my assumption of what arrow people are. Exactly. Why aren't you like that? Right. It's, it's right. like, well, is and that I'm my like, fault the biggest, or yours? The biggest takeaway for me today would just be like, as other aromantic or questioning people are listening, yeah. is the importance of authenticity and mm -hmm. not trying to be a romantic. There's no right or wrong way to be a romantic. You just are. You know, your expression of how you desire to show that to people should not be limited to the expression of, oh, I can't do this because it doesn't look a romantic or I can't, you know, experience that because it may change my romantic. Like, you just are. Like, you're born that way, the same way people are born by, the same way people are born pan, the same way people are born any type of expression or um, experience that they're having. That's just your disposition. And, you know, um, nothing can change that. And I feel like if it changes, then flow with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's you and your experience. And yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you for those really inspiring words. So um, hopefully uh, folks out there also got something um, really awesome about that. Looks like the chat is chat rather. It's popping up with hearts. So uh, good uh -huh. job. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, well, awesome. Thank you so much for like that really like 
all of those things that you touched on, right? Your identity and all, all those different intersections of your identity. And also, you know, the parts of owning a business and operating as an arrow that almost like you come up against the amount of normative world more <laughs> than you expected, right? Yeah. Um, it's so interesting. I'm still learning. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good luck. Tell us, I'm you know. Like thinking of like, okay, for Christmas, like, what am I going to do? Oh, no. <laughs> Christmas um, is still a while away. You'll be okay. Right. Uh, but Buy something for no reason. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, you can convince yeah. enough people. I think you could. Sure. Um, yeah. Well, I guess I'll have, um, since we're pivoting over and you were talking about relationships, I'd be happy to have both um, you and Nick do your lovely tag team. Um, he's not here anymore, actually. Oh, I'm great. <laughs> now, now, now he's... <laughs> um, do you want to use yours? Yeah, I think the ankle's better. We gotta switch back. So no problem. The his. Okay, we'll see y'all in a second. Awesome. <laughs> Do I leave? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, lots of thank yous. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome to be having them. All right, here we go. They're coming back. Hey. All right, you're muted. Uh, so all you got to do is get. Uh, and we're back. There we go. Yes, now you're good. <laughs> I think it's. Oh, good. hang on. It's <laughs> technical. This is the fun part of, of live yeah. streams. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, awesome. So, cool. Cool, cool. Welcome cool. both. Welcome back. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we are in our QPR. And uh, and that's the end. And that's it. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, tell tell some of us at least because I know what a QPR is, um, but some people might not know what a QPR is that are watching. Um, I guess we should start with that, and then you can talk about at least what it is for you. Um, yeah. Well, I think that's like a a good point to start off on. It's like a, I feel like a QPR or a queer platonic relationship is like really whatever you want it to be. You know what I mean? It's basically at least from my understanding, it's like essentially anything that is like a relationship outside of what uh, typically goes for a relationship, you know? Right, like outside um, the norm. Yeah, you know what I mean? And like, I kind of, you know, dislike using the word norm, um, but you know, sure. for, for lack of a better term, uh, I guess that's what we can use. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, so it's kind of, um, you know, to basically two or more people uh, deciding that I don't know that they like, like the same shows. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's basically what it is. Oh, you've called yeah, us all out. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we pretty much just hang around and watch TV all day. Yeah, that's super. And I like to cook. Yeah, yeah. And I'm a I, I buy boba all the time. So indeed, right. That's right. what he's really saying. <laughs> but no, it was really funny because we, uh, yeah, we did. We like uh, met up on the internet. Um, mm -hmm. I think probably like mostly on like a sexual attraction thing initially. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like we were both just interested. I mean, we'd follow each other on Facebook for a bit, so like we knew we had common interests as well. Right. Uh, but you know, I I'm never really looking for like a relationship or anything like that. Like mm -hmm. even uh, in this like platonic relationship that I'm in now, it, as great as it is, like if for whatever reason this were to uh, stop being a thing. I wouldn't like actively be looking for another one. It's not that kind mm. of this dynamic is not one that I was looking for or right. necessarily it like. It just like kind of happened. Yeah, like yeah. it's his fault though. Like he shared a really amazing <laughs> picture. I wish I could do a pop up of the picture <laughs> from Facebook, and I was like, this is really inconvenient because now I have to interact with this photo. <laughs> that's, that's what happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it is really <laughs> funny. We did actually like straight up have our first like date or whatever on Valentine's Day last year. Which um, was hilarious because he wanted he was like, oh, do you want to like meet up Friday? And I was thinking Friday is Friday because even prior to knowing that I was aromantic, I was never really a big Valentine's Day person anyway. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that Friday was Valentine's Day. And then I realized after, and then I was just like, I hope he's not going to be weird and try to be all like romantic because I will bounce. Like, yeah, I you'll like leave. <laughs> Yeah. this date <laughs> no, we, we both entirely forgot that it was valentine's day so like we were out just like all these like couples around and like, stuff like that why can't we get food why are there lines everywhere yeah. Yeah. So pretty funny. <laughs> um but then yeah we just started hanging out more and we just have like so much in common and um we uh you know with quarantine going around we weren't really seeing other people so we just decided like her and i were going to be our 
our person, you know what I mean? Yeah. Keeping our social circles uh, really small. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. she works during the week and she comes over on the weekends and stuff like that. And we end up yeah. having, uh, you know, just binge sessions and whatnot or nice. hanging out. But yeah, what's really nice is that like, you know, a lot. Of, I feel like a lot of people um, like see us as like, oh, like you're clearly like together, like you're like in a relationship, mm -hmm. like, like a you couple. guys are in love, whatever. Yeah. Right. And it's like, yes and no, like, yeah, we've decided to like be in a partnership, whatever, but mm -hmm. um, like, you know, like it's, is yes, yeah, it's not based on like a romantic it's just attraction. A decision. Yeah. <laughs> like I think one of the funniest things that I learned um after you know coming out as aromantic and making my content and stuff, I did a video mm -hmm. um and I didn't know that people didn't choose their crushes. Mm. Like I, I I honestly have chosen every single person that I was like gonna crush on ever in my life. Like yeah. Me to me, it's like being a fangirl. It's like, oh, I like Adam Driver. That's I just how chose it. it feels to me. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then when I'm done being obsessed with whatever element of their, you know, character or Persona. whatever, I just, yeah. I'm just done with it. it. There's no lingering feeling. There's no like let down or heartbreak or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's just like a decision. Like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. And I, my impression of like, romance or like love was like two people decide they want to keep hanging out together and i mm. i know that that's what not what it was mm. <laughs> so yeah i was just like oh okay yeah i'm definitely a romantic because like that's not if that's not what it is and i don't know what it is yeah if you're not making um, a decision to do this then what are you doing yeah yeah um, so i i guess mm -hmm. like i didn't i never knew that people really didn't or allo romantic people really didn't have like a control I don't really my my brain is making the windows error sound like right. over um who they are attracted to in that way mm, um, right, right you know and I guess like the only thing I can reference or related to is like mm -hmm. as a bisexual person we make a joke like me and all my bisexual friends are just like we think that everybody's bi and they just like aren't ready to admit it because we cannot conceive a brain that does not find everyone attractive like right. you know like so you mean to tell me you never, like, it's just like, it's unbelievable. So like yeah. the, the thought of like a person who is out of romantic, like, oh, I don't have a choice. I just love this person. I'm like, I don't know. It seems, it seems suspicious. <laughs> it seems suspicious. <laughs> I'm sure you have a choice, Like you can just make a decision. And they're just like, no, I just feel this way. So like yeah. a, a queer platonic relationship to me is just like, you just decide someone's cool. And you're like, Hey, you want to hang out? You like spaghetti? Me too cool let's watch a, let's watch a tv show or whatever right. and i think a really um a good element about our uh queer time relationship is that it's non-monogamous because mm -hmm. um that is i feel like an extension of mm -hmm. my aromanticism is like i cannot just like be with one person mm -hmm. be with a person just sounds like <laughs> not your thing yeah it's not yeah. Like, <laughs> compatible with your experience yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think one of the uh, combos that we had when we were kind of deciding if we were going to be do like a queer platonic relationship, or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Divinity had asked me kind of like, oh, like we we were kind of briefly talking about like if we shouldn't do it, like if we shouldn't call it a queer platonic relationship. She was kind of like, you know, like how does this differentiate? How does our relationship differentiate? from like regular friendships and stuff like that mm. and in my mind I was like to be honest it like it, yeah it doesn't really you know like mm. it's like uh, like I've it's not like a like if you're looking for like a special feeling or connection that like I I don't have that for you you know what I mean I guess mm. you know but what I the difference to me is that like she was saying earlier it's like I've chosen you like you're somebody that right. I think is an awesome person so I choose yeah. to like invest more of my time and energy mm. with you uh based on like a choice and, and who you are and that you know right. I mean? it's not like i'm drawn to you it's not like you know i mean if you decided you know oh i don't i just i'd rather just be friends like okay mm -hmm. like i'm not you know it is that's that's fine like you know what i mean mm -hmm. um it really there's not really a difference in my mind between friends and in a corrupt relationship like the what the i to me i think one of the biggest drives for like motivating to kind of define it i guess is both her and i've uh, discussed having kids at some point like we both mm -hmm. like individually said we really wanted kids and a long, long time ago, uh, I, I've always known I wanted kids, but obviously being a romantic, I was like, well, I have to figure out how that would work. Mm -hmm, yeah. uh, but honestly, my parents split up when I was very young, like six or something. Um, and they, they co-parented just fine. You know what I mean? Like they were mm -hmm. great. And aside from the ugliness of their breakup, everything was chill. So I was like, I mean, there's no reason I can't just start from the breakup stage, right? Like you just start. <laughs> like, I, I 
can't live with someone in a co-parenting situation would be like the only yeah. thing that I would want to do as far as like having kids with someone. Like, no, no. Mm. But, but it's so funny with like it's so funny to me because I've just never really been good at doing things that I don't want to do. Like I just I have very little patience for like entertaining that or doing things. Like I like I the day I got to college, I'd signed up for a business degree. Um, and I, I, I walked in on uh, orientation and they gave me the syllabus for the business degree. Now, this is like the map of your next four years. And there was literally not a single class on the whole thing for four years. And I was just like, I can't do this. And like, I immediately walked over to the communications degree and bought a communication, or got the communication thing. And then fast forward three and a half years, my, I'm seeing my like guidance counselor, whatever. And they're like, okay, so you're graduating in six months. Like, have you thought about what you want to do for a job? And I was like, oh, I have to get a job with this. And like, do you want to work in movies? And I was like, not really. I don't know. I just like those classes. Like, and so uh, to bring it back, it's like, you know, when I was thinking about More trying classes, to do please. like relationships and stuff, I was always just like, mm -hmm. I like, you know, like the dating, like the fun dating part of it. And yeah, I like right. sex, obviously. But mm -hmm. like everything else, it's not even a matter of like, I, I don't like it. I literally can't do it. Yeah. But that doesn't mm. mean I'm going to stop doing the stuff that I do like. So it was very a la carte for me. I figured out like right. even before I was air, like new arrow, I figured out how to kind of like, you know, communicate my wants, needs and limitations uh, to any potential partners to make it clear like, hey, this is what I'm offering. Are you right. interested? You know? And right. so, um, you know, coming into a corporate relationship was pretty easy in that front. Because again, I was just kind of like, hey, like this is what I'm thinking and this is how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. Like, are you down? And it was really yeah. funny because, again, kind of going back to what I was saying at the beginning of the combo was like, people are so scared or like unwilling to think outside the box that like, I was telling a friend of mine, he was like, oh, so this whole air rant thing, like, you're never going to have kids now, right? I said, oh, no, I want kids. And he was like, well, how are you going to do that? And I was like, oh, I'm just going to find a friend. And I was just going to co-parent with them. And he literally like stared at me straight up. For, like, <laughs> literally, he stared at me for like a full minute and goes, you can't do that. <laughs> That's against the rules. Right. Yeah. You know, you can tell, like, he genuinely, like, because he'd been, like, stuck in relationships where he, like, thought he was just supposed to do that, right? And yeah. you could tell he just felt cheated that he had never, like, thought to do something that was, like, right. not done before. You know yeah. I mean? yeah, like, that you didn't know you could do, you know? Yeah. I'm like, dude, do whatever the hell you want. It's just finding consenting people. You know what I mean? Like, right. the world exactly. is whatever you want. As long as both people are getting what they need and yep. want in the situation, then like you don't have to explain that to anyone. Yeah, I think and that's, that's a good. Yeah, exactly. I think it's <laughs> a great lesson for like just everybody in general, and it's something that a lot of like aromantics and people in QPRs bring to a lot of like other queer people or just non queer people. Like it's like you're saying with that friend you were talking uh, about, Nick. Like if they if this person knew that you know in the past yeah. and thought to think outside the box how differently like, would they have lived their lives exactly yeah. right so it's it's it, the way that you make decisions about relationships right like you can do that regardless of the attraction you have or don't have right like um, for me I was like not like I wanted kids but like was like I'm just gonna forgo it because mm -hmm. my living nightmare would be like somebody is romantically interested in me in a way that I am not interested in them but we mm -hmm. had together and because they're having like unrequited feelings for me mm -hmm. that they make my life a living hell because they just can't mm -hmm. deal with the fact that I'm not going to reciprocate gotcha. that at any time. So I was just right. like, rather than to get involved in that kind of situation or be connected to someone that way in life, I'm just not going to do it. And mm -hmm. then I like met someone who just like was kind of on the same page as me. And I was like, oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Maybe it will work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I will. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, I'm glad that you have like this kind of relationship and also that like this kind of like the QPR, the queer platonic relationship can really do something for you, right? Because sometimes it's like going outside the box with relationships uh, can be sort of difficult, but when you have like a term for it, right? Like there's a QPR, there are other people that do it too. Um, I find that like pretty affirming, right? There are a lot of people in the mm -hmm. chat currently talking about how affirming your entire conversation is right oh, now. So, nice. Um, nice. Yes, so it, yeah, it's just it, that, yeah. It's super interesting because it's just like I've like my longest relationship before now was like eight weeks. You know what I mean? I always tell people mm. it's like, you know, it just doesn't work for me, obviously. You know what I mean? And right. so, um, you know, and we've and now again, Valentine's Day just passed. So it's been about a year. And even like that approaching was like, we were both like, don't say it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, so do you want to like do like, something? I was like, like, absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. We're like, no, nah, we're cool. We're like, oh, that's what? double too because it's. <laughs> It's an anniversary, but it's also Valentine's. We oh my God. Like, how, how did you do this? Yeah. A friend anniversary. That's what it is. Yeah. Right. But that's the thing, right. you know, Sorry. it's like an explain to everybody. It's like, it's really just a friend. It's like, think about how you act with 
like your, your closest friends and like yeah. that's our dynamic you know what i mean there's, yeah. there's really nothing yeah. more to it like yeah we hook up and like we but other than that like it's pretty much just like a regular straightforward friendship you know right, right. um and it's just been uh yeah it's just been really cool and, and it's nice to have a friend so close that also shares your same like yes similarity like when the outside world or people who are not aromantic or, or whatever know nothing about the aero great ace experience yep. i can be like oh my god this happened and this is what they said and can you believe yeah. and then like it's like yeah <laughs> go off sis yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's validating yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it's just, it's just so funny because honestly, like even being in this QPR, that is like, you know, pretty 10 out of 10 would recommend, uh, Same. like, you know, I mean, we, I'd say, I think both of us still end up having like moments where we're kind of like, wait, like, am I in a relationship right now? You know? <laughs> and like, it's not, it's literally nothing that the person has done. It's just like, you just sit there and all of a sudden you just get like, wait, wait, split over, split over. Yeah. Right. It's like, you're just like, you're like, wait, like, you know, and then like you just have to remind yourself that like you know when no, you're this actually is true. doing this, this is chill, yeah. This is chill. And um, <laughs> the door is right here. We can both get out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. If there's ever an audience that can appreciate it, this would be it because I fucking died. Like it was like like the day after we had decided to be in the corrupt time relationship, whatever. And uh, she sent me a meme, a meme of um, fucking um, Princess Bride. Yeah, the Princess Bride. If you guys have seen the movie, have you seen it? Yeah. So she sent me the meme of the fucking, um, so what is it? Uh, Good night, Wesley. Sleep right. well, probably kill you in the morning. <laughs> like that was like our relationship. It's like, yeah, it's okay for tonight, but we'll tomorrow probably break up tomorrow. Be. We'll probably break up tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, because it just, we just can't imagine, but it's been really chill. I'm like, uh, e even with it going as well as it has been going, you know, like it's still kind of like, um, like it, literally it's almost like you're we're low-key looking for a reason for it not right. to work because this is like did you watch the tv show yeah, without no. me because now don't leave yeah yeah no, that's it's it like, that's the last straw yeah it's like you're literally because literally like it, we're so similar like even not aero stuff like we're just really both into star wars and marvel and binging tv right. like similar really if there was if there was literally any reason not to, to do, do this we, we would not like if there was yeah. literally any kind like i this is no bullshit. We've now been like hanging out, whatever, for a, a little over a year now. Yeah. Our biggest fight, our old, literally our only, only fight, fight, our little yeah. only fight ever, just happened about two weeks ago, <laughs> and it was because I watched the episode of WandaVision without it. I was pissed. Oh, <laughs> I knew she was gonna say you can watch it without. It. Literally, she texted me, goes, "Hey, if you want to watch the episode without me, you can." And I was like, "Oh, cool. I thought you would say that, so I already watched it." She was like, "Yeah, really? but what?" And I was like, what? <laughs> You said it. What? I knew you would say that, and then you said it. Why? Should have waited. Should have waited. Like that again. So that shows you how little conflict there was. Because, like, legitimately, if there was any reason not to, we really wouldn't do it. But it's just, it, you know, like literally, if you like, I always told people before, people would kind of fictionalize. Like, so if you know, theoretically, before I met Divinity, theoretically, if you were to meet yeah. somebody that, like, you know, whatever, like, didn't need a relationship or another arrow person, would you be in a relationship? And I was like. Theoretically, yeah, I guess I would, but like the list of like things that they would have to be for me to like care enough to even try it is so sp weirdly specific that I can't imagine this person is even out there. Oh, and then gosh. Like, I literally stumbled upon her. So like, <laughs> so if there's any message I can give to you guys, like I know that being Arrow or being Arrow Ace or being your specific brand of Arrow, whatever it is, might like it. You know, yes, it, it likely dwindles your potential dating pool very by slim. <laughs> But there is definitely a brand of weird out there for you. So, yeah, you know, it, I'm like, but I'm like the good kind of weird, yeah. you know? So it, yeah. it, if a partnership is something you're looking for, I know it can yeah. be like super like draining or frustrating, like trying to find that 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 kind of person ever. But like, I swear they're out there. So if, if you have the energy and you, if it is something you want, don't yeah. give up. Keep keep putting yourself out there. And also dates. make your own rules. Yeah, yeah. Make your own rules. That's the, whole thing. the frequency in which we hang out is amazing because, like, as much as we have a good time, I need to be alone and by myself yeah. and like, to myself and you know away or whatever. And yeah. I think we both feel the same way. It's yeah, I mean, like, even us. We have about, a great time, but it's like okay, bye. Yeah, even talking about having kids, <laughs> we're like, okay, so we're still gonna need, but like, we'll each need a two-bedroom apartment. <laughs> yeah. So we can each have a room for the kids. We can live down the block. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, if you want to move to like this side of the city, so they're like, we'll be close. But that was a big problem I had before I knew I was a romantic. It's like I, I cannot live with someone like that intimacy. Mm. It's just not something that is. I'm repulsed by that. So like right. I, there were times where I was like going home to my then like live-in partner 
And I would come home from work and go up to my roof and sit on my roof and cry for 30 minutes before going into the house. Because I was just like, so, and of course I didn't know what was going on with me. I was just like, I, this is not, this is not working. Right. Yeah. You needed that time alone. And almost you you came home. And you know, one of his videos, he talks about um, your wants and needs. Even if you're not a romantic, it's literally one of my favorite videos because Mm -hmm. it's something that people need to sit down with themselves and figure that out. Like, what are my wants and needs about connection? What am I willing to like? What can I compromise as far as my wants and meet someone halfway? But what are things that I cannot bend on that if I don't have these things, I'm not going to be my fullest, happiest self, you know? And and I feel like, yeah, yeah, and I feel like through you know, my journey of accepting and unlearning in my aromanticism and gray aceness right. and bisexuality and my queer cocktail, mm-hmm. we're just going to call it a queer cocktail. Your queer um, cocktail. I, my queer cocktail, right? I have learned to really sit with myself and know what my needs are. Because if you don't mm-hmm. know what your needs are, you don't know what your boundaries are. And yeah. if you know what your boundaries are, you're just out here like raw dog in connection mm-hmm. <laughs> and wondering why people are like walking all over you and right. why you're unhappy. So, right. you know, I'm grateful to the aromantic community because it really forced me in a way to really sit down with myself and say like, who am I and what do I need to feel right. like myself? Yeah, that's like the biggest, I think, takeaway if you're looking to date or you're looking to even just companionship or whatever it is, it's mm-hmm. like what you were saying, uh, just learning your, what I call one thing's limitations. Like you want to things that like, obviously you'd ideally like to have and you can compromise a bit on. Your needs are something that is like, you know, you absolutely need. If you're not getting, then it's not going to work. Like if two people are trying to compromise on their needs, both of you are only getting half what you need. It's not going to work out. Yeah. And then obviously your limitations are like, you know, if you're, if your potential partner needs something that you genuinely can't give because of your limitations, you mean, it's just not going to work out. So just really understanding what those are um, when you're trying to date and like getting, getting those uh, communicated clearly in as early as possible so that you can really uh, figure out the potential of pe- compatibility. Cause I think when people are like in love, they overlook yeah. those things a lot. They're like, the love will compensate for whatever we're missing. And I'm like, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. 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 Based on my uh, research, that does not seem to be the case. No, but it's important. Like, it's a completely good point, right? Because I think a lot of people like Aloe's too will think that the, it'll just work out eventually. Yeah. Like, you have to work it out. It won't yeah. just work yeah. out. You have to do it. Um, well, we're coming into the end of our time. It's been super awesome to have both of you on. Into Thank you so much for having uh, us. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, yeah, feel free to pop off and, and uh, we'll see you in Quiplash later. For sure. Um, yes, Let's for you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you again. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Have a good one. Oh, do you want, can we plug our stuff real quick? Oh, yeah. Go. Where can you? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you want to throw your oh. YouTube and stuff? So, all of my social media is exactly the same. Officially, Divinity, no spaces or underscores or anything like that. Um, I am on TikTok, Instagram, and um, don't follow me on Facebook because I'll be sharing all my personal business on there. So Instagram, Facebook. No, I just don't follow me on Facebook. Hey, <laughs> Instagram and TikTok. Follow there Instagram, you go. TikTok, and YouTube. Officially, Divinity. He's going to do a better job than I did. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's just at Nick Hampshire uh, on everything as well. Uh, I'm mostly just on Instagram and uh, YouTube. I'm, I'm mostly on Instagram. That's like my main platform. That's where I'm like connecting with people the most. Uh, and my YouTube is specifically Arrow though. So if you're like looking specifically for Arrow stuff, go to my YouTube. I do not update it as often as I should um, because I'm still like new and Working on it though. Yeah. Uh, but the videos that are there, I think are pretty good. I, I do respond to every comment. It, it sometimes can take me a week or so, but I'll get to it. A quick note, if anybody is here for my YouTube or anything, I just found out, like, I kept getting comments to my YouTube that were disappearing. Like, I would see them in my notifications, and I would go to it, and they would not be there. Tons of comments. And somebody just messaged, like, commented uh, yesterday and said, if you put the word queer in your comment, it will get censored. And even her comment got censored because it said queer in it. Oh, another issue. (laughs) Yeah, so that was something. So if you guys are commenting on YouTube and stuff, and your people aren't responding, and you're, like, using that word... That's probably why. So interesting. Work around it. But, uh, also, if you want to support my business, um, it is Lulu Gotti, L U L U G A U D Y. Um, this is one of my wigs from my shop. I made it especially for this event. So I know y'all good. see the aromantic colors, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but anyway, um, you can follow me on there. It's on Instagram, Lulu Gotti. All right. Thank you so much Thanks, for guys. having Appreciate us. Appreciate you. Yes. Oh. Be ready for Quiplash. Yes. Okay.
I'm going to be creamed by these people. Um, they're very good. <laughs> Bye. See you. There we go. There we go. All right. Well, awesome. Thanks to them. Um, and uh, our third guest before our halftime break is going to be the Arting Ace, um, also known as Caitlin Candy. Since we have a, had a lot of um, uppity chatter um, just now with Nick and Divinity, um, we're going to have a little bit of a cool down with some live drawing. Um, Caitlin is an Aeroace illustrator um, and artist. Um, now I'm going to let her in um, so that uh, she can get in on all of this. Um, there we go. Now we have her coming out. Connecting. Hello. You are muted. I'm just going to let you know. Uh, Oops. There we go. How's there that? There we go. Yeah. All welcome. Right. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I always manage to do that. Let's see. That's okay. Welcome. Oh, I love there we the, go. Oh, okay. the, the little dog. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> awesome. So um, I'm just going to let the chat in the stream know um, we're going to have Caitlin taking drawing requests from you all in the chat. Um, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Caitlin, uh, the things that you're not going to be drawing are uh, cars. Um, nudity and other not safe for work stuff essentially um, yes, yes anything else that you're like uh eh, maybe not today um probably not environments or anything like that so yeah. just kind of keep it simple definitely characters but anything monsters little humans little characters anything you can think of yeah i can right. try and tackle all right so with that i do know we have a bit of a delay so i'm just gonna um wait for people to start going in but um if the chat wants to throw in something that Caitlin wants to doodle, whether it's arrow related or not. Um, oh, someone's already done it, an arrow arrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, that would be great. Um, and how are you doing, by the way? How are you I'm doing? doing pretty well. We just came hot off of a D&D session. Oh, we excellent. Whoa. Just a little one shot. Nice. For the first time. Was it good? Very fun. Oh, it was very fun. Oh excellent. my goodness. We've got excellent. a good chaos crew. Excellent. Chaos Crew is the best for when you do Dungeons and Dragons, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we were talking so, about an arrow arrow? Yes, an arrow arrow is what someone said. And lots of frogs as well, <laughs> um, if you want to go for those. Oh my goodness. Okay. I can always do. Let's see here. What should we do? You can always do. When I was little, my dad used to draw this frog. And he was part of what made me interested in art. So, oh, really? You, yep. He was my dad. is a fantastic artist mm -hmm. and uh, an airplane engineer. So, I love that combo. <laughs> but he used to draw this frog for us, so we can draw it today. Oh, I love it! Very so silly excited. little guy, but yeah. he's always what I think of when somebody says draw a frog. There you go. I'm glad you have a reference in your mind for a frog because they can be <laughs> tricky. <laughs> they are odd little creatures. I've they had are. a couple of friends who are just all about frogs and toads. They just love them. Oh, beautiful. They're just so cute. Oops. He'll be a great little warm up here for us. Oh, the chat says good froggo. Um, <laughs> everyone really likes it. Uh, oh, and you're going to hold the flag. Look at this. Wow. There we go. A little belly there, of course, yep. of course. Yeah, we've got to have the belly uh, whenever you're drawing a frog. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let me make sure I've got my colors right. Mm. Yeah, they really, the chat really loves this frog. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, who doesn't love frogs? So I mean, in the arrow community, especially, um, they are something of a of an icon at this point. Oh, are they? Okay, I must. I don't know on something. Yeah, there's something about it. Um, I mean, you got the green, you got the frog. I think that's the, the that's the thing. Um, frogs granted, frogs come in a lot of different colors. Um, <laughs> they do, but the green is definitely like the iconic frog. Exactly. Oh, nice. If you see something like that, you're going to know it's a frog. Yeah. It looks like the other like requests that I'm seeing in the chat are uh, 
uh, very similar green things. Um, <laughs> ah, well. okay. Um, All right. Oh, nice. You got the light green in there. Mm -hmm. There we go. And let's make him. Oh, matching green. There we go. I think it just makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Sure, my colors are right here. Yes. Colors are always very important when you're doing the pride flag. Any other pride flags? Oh yeah, that's true. Um, granted, everyone's monitors are a little different, so like you could <laughs> argue like, oh, it's just your monitor. Um, exactly. Yeah. I'm sure my colors back here, my camera is picking up in some strange way, so uh, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. We'll get close enough and call it. Yes, it's identifiable. Um, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the important part. Exactly. Oh, nice. And with the little belly, like the lighter color. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, someone suggested that you integrate the airplane, um, have the frog on an airplane. Um, on an airplane? <laughs> if you want to do that, we can also. Uh, oh, do yeah, there else. we go. I see where they're going with it. Mm hmm. <laughs> Cute. Very cute. There we go. Oh, I love it. Now, me. I think I know where this dog in the corner is coming from, but for the chat, <laughs> would you like to tell the chat what this dog is from? Yes. Well, we were attempting to meet. We've got a troublesome little fluff monger. Mm -hmm. who likes to wander around our house and yell oh. about things. That is actually my sibling's dog. Mm -hmm. Her name is Piper. Piper! And she is a little troublemaker. Uh huh. She was standing <laughs> in for my ranger's wolf during today's video game. Oh, that's great! Or video game, D&D &D game. D&D <laughs> video game. Ah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a, what is it? It's RPG. a It's a, a video game of the mind. There we go. Yes. Yes, a video game of the mind. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's very wholesome. It is a very fluffy dog, can confirm. Um, <laughs> did see on video. So. Yeah, if, she, if we do it on video, then if we, I was able to do video, mm -hmm. then she would definitely get a debut. She is worth, worth a debut. Uh, yes, very sure. fluffy. Very fluffy. Absolutely huh. irresistibly fluffy. <laughs> and a troublemaker, the best combination when it comes to pets. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Irresistibly cute, uh, so that whatever trouble they cause, uh, they'll get a pass on. <laughs> exactly, so, so they can get out of any trouble that they cause. Yes. Oh, I mm. love this airplane. <laughs> I'm glad you know what airplanes look like. <laughs> Love to travel and having grown up as yeah, the daughter true. of an airplane of an engineer. I've seen a few in my life. <laughs> yes, yes. Probably more than some of us. So you've got a good advantage there. <laughs> oh, I love it. So I think that should. What do we think of that, chat? Chat, what do you think of the um, arrow frog on the aeroplane? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, puns are arrow culture, they're saying. Uh, um, <laughs> it's true. Oh, someone says, uh, I've seen this before too. There's an arrow astronaut helmet pin that's like oh, aerospace yes. engineer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did see that. I saw that. Um, I yeah. know exactly what they're talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah. chat loves it. Just love it, love it. Um, the frog should hold a cactus in the other hand, someone says. <laughs> Um, just pile as many <laughs> green things as possible. Yeah, just as many little symbols and stuff. Yes, lots it of green hearts done. in the chat. All right, Caitlin's doing yeah. it for y'all. Just for you, chat. Just for you. <laughs> <laughs> this needs to be a patch. I need to like print print screen this, screenshot it, and uh, 
embroider it somehow. Um, <laughs> there we go. It is a nice, simple design. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and it's in a little pot. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Got it more than a few cactuses myself. One of oh, which good. Re refuses to die despite being out left out in the winter cold. Really? Yeah, I was surprised. Oh. I live in the Midwest, so. Okay. It got snowed on and somehow they're still alive. Really? Resilient, huh? Wow. For sure. They are definitely living up to their nature. That is yeah. for sure. No, I always, I kill all of my cactuses, unfortunately. <laughs> um, I strongly <laughs> They're surprisingly suspect... easy to take down. Just a little extra yeah. water. Just a little too much of the hydration and, you know, they really just conk out on you. They do. Yeah. I have killed, despite having left the, you know, I, as you can probably tell from me leaving it out in the snow, <laughs> leaving a cactus out in the snow, I have been known to uh, put my plants through it for sure. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that this one has survived. Perhaps it got some um, advice from the plant beyond um, or whatever <laughs> from the others. No, it's oh. true. Oh, there are people in the chat that also have cactuses. They would like you to know. Um, um. So uh, that's very good. <laughs> um, oh, there we go. Uh, yeah. I've got all kinds of succulents and house plants. Yes. Good. I think that that seems to be a common arrow experience, which is weird, but not surprising either. Yeah, um, exactly. So <laughs> it makes sense. We're not sure does, why, but it does yeah, make sense. It does. It tracks. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Oh, Chad has pointed out that we're missing the... Uh, the gray stripe in the arrow flag, um, oh. right between the white and the black. <laughs> oh, yep. I see that now. Thank you, chat. <laughs> Here we go. See, I'm even, I was even using the gray. Yep. Yeah. It was all, you know, on purpose, right? Um, exactly. I was just waiting for the, I was testing you all. Exactly. It was you a test. You all passed. The test. Congratulations, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> Very wholesome. Um, so Caitlin, I know that um, like I found you on Twitter, but do you have any other social media uh, that uh, you want to plug in? Um, yeah, I am on Twitter. I am also on Tumblr. Those are kind of my two mm. main ones that I tend to post all my art to and tend to be most active. I am on Instagram. All three mm -hmm. of those are under the same name all the yeah. arting ace mm -hmm. all one word generally mm -hmm. um but i do tend to i'm not very active on instagram i keep trying i keep giving it a try it just doesn't seem to agree with me i just don't quite get it <laughs> yeah i guess it's not a good uh, uh medium for what you're putting out there basically yeah yeah it just doesn't make as much sense to me i guess i'm just i think mm. i'm just an old fogey Oh, <laughs> I'm you old at heart in the ways that matter, which is not being good at social media other than one or two that I have chosen. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of a mood. Um, I'm like that with Twitter, actually. So I'm glad that you're representing the arrows and uh, the aspect on um, on Twitter uh, because I can't figure out Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's I find there's always one social media platform that everyone can't get. They can't yeah. quite get a hold of it. I've seen very few people who are kind of all on those big three and doing yeah. well. Yeah. There's yeah. always one that kind of confounds you. Yeah. That's why I'm glad we have like the Aurea team, right? If I don't understand Twitter, we at least have our social media coordinator who does <laughs> understand Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, and somebody on the team will get, you know, what Reddit is and get what Tumblr is. Um, oh, so. yeah, that's true. Reddit is another one, but yeah, <laughs> they seem pretty mean over there. So I yep. do lurk on it, but I am not, I don't have an account or anything. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty common too. Um, it's very like uh, conducive to doing that. So, <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Oh, this is so wholesome. All right. I like that you did some like um, arrow flag colors of the airplane at the bottom too. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to think, is this like a miniature airplane or is this like a really large frog that is on this airplane? I don't know. I feel like it's got to be a miniature, but just because I like the idea of mm. a miniature air. I want to see an actual miniature airplane flying around yeah. with a little frog on its back. 
yeah, holding a, a, a really tiny cactus, that would be. If that's like... That would have to be a pretty <laughs> tiny cactus, admittedly. Yeah. Um, I like it. I like it. Um, oh, someone in the chat is requesting a top hat on the frog. Ooh. Yes. An Very excellent dapper. addition. Mm -hmm. Um. And chat also thinks that a big forg, as they call it, or large frog, uh, <laughs> is the, the actual way we should be going. Um. I agree. That <laughs> is an excellent, just a giant monster frog. Yeah, a friend, a friend monster, a friendster. Um, exactly. That's a word for something, though, isn't it? I don't know. Um, but it sounds like it should be, but I couldn't tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this Oops. looks great. Oh, <laughs> I was a little cursed for a second there. Um, yeah, just a little inversion as we forget to fill in our lines here. Yeah. Nope, still nope. not working. <laughs> oh, now oh, I got to just color it in as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Nice. There's always there's always a hole in your line art that will cause it. Oh, and success. Like so. <laughs> Yeah. Is that something that you come across often when you're doing digital? Uh, just those kinds of very digital specific. Um... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just you got to make sure you fill in all the holes or you're going to have. It just it's just not going to work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Makes there's definitely sense. I've been doing digital art for a very long time, but there's always mm -hmm. still a little bit of adjustment from mm -hmm. physical art. Yeah, that makes sense. Great. Oh, the, now they want a bow tie also on the frog. <laughs> He's got, oh, I, an, they got some good ideas. I got to go with it. That's a pretty good idea. Well, now they want an arrow bow tie. Like what? <laughs> I was just about frog. to say, wait, I think we can uh, work in some stripes maybe here. Oh, I can match with the frog. Oh, y'all are great, Chad. Uh, <laughs> y'all are coming in with some really, some really great ideas here. Yeah, very, very creative. Um, nice. Here. There we go. Yeah, what does my bow tie look like? Now I'm like, um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, nice. Match the dark one. Let's Beautiful. See. And just. Well, the dark green on top does blend a little bit into his body, but you know what? Mm. We'll give it to him. It's he's fine. Just, he's just well matched. Yeah, exactly. Um, really picked out his outfits this morning. Um, exactly. Yeah. Oh, this looks so cute. <laughs> yeah. Chat says he's a dapper boy. So. The most very, dapperest. Very yes, the dapperest. <laughs> Someone has named him Bathazar. Um, <laughs> that's his name now, I guess. He can Chat, do you agree? <laughs> Chat has decided, has given him a name. Yes. It's very powerful. It is very powerful. <laughs> Bathazero, someone says. Uh, adding a, an O onto the end of Bathazar. So it's Bathazaro, Bath, Bathaz, yes. Uh, You're really like Bizarro, maybe? Oh, yeah. Is that where maybe. we're going? I think so. They're throwing as many arrow puns as possible um, in. Are we getting a friend now? I think we're good. Oh, how about a, a real fog to con contrast? <laughs> or at least a more realistic. Mm -hmm. Of course, the green, very important. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. This is now the official arrow mascot, says the chat. So <laughs> congratulations, Caitlin, you've made the arrow mascot. There we go. Um, hard Maybe. to reproduce. 
Um, but <laughs> yeah, he's definitely got some complexity to him. Yeah. What do you think about it? How how do you feel about this legacy that you're leaving? Um, you know what? I think it's a great one. There you go. Couldn't ask for anything more. <laughs> Making a frog for the air community. Brilliant. Large. Community <laughs> made community made and voted on as it should be. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I figured we can throw a little real frogs. Yeah. Exactly. Two frogs better than one. Yes. Uh, people are saying this is his stealth mode. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> put the hat on and there's like a whole party going on and then take the hat off, you know, just regular old frog. Exactly. Um, yeah. Very relatable. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Have you drawn any other like arrow symbols type things um, in your time? Um, you mean arrow symbols? Yeah, or things that uh, things that speak arrow to you, I suppose, like this, oh. perhaps, where um, it became sort of a bit of a symbol for you, um, regardless of if it was for other people. Oh, um, I can't say so uh, that much. Yeah, for the most part, I do a lot of monster creation and everything, so oh. they usually have some sort of backdrop and everything. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, but not so much. Not so much in the as far as the community mindset. I usually hmm. just creating. I think at one point for the uh, when I was on Aven, mm -hmm. they requested a penguin. <laughs> 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 very specifically yeah, yeah, uh, yeah very specifically i think it was uh it was on a skateboard doing something i don't recall oh. <laughs> it was quite a few years ago but i kind of love that there's like some aspect solidarity going on there there's like a penguin on a skateboard and a frog now on an airplane i feel like it's coming together <laughs> it's uh, it really it really relates in some way how we can't really tell but you know what it does really i We're like that it. yeah i like that that's a good description of uh, the relationship between those particular communities. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. That's great. There's some crossovers. Oh, For some, sure. someone's requested fangs now on the frog because you mentioned monsters. Um, so. What is it? Oh, fangs? Fangs, yes. Ah, OK, OK, OK. Wait, which frog should we go it on? Oh, I don't know. Uh, realistic frog or top hat frog? Do we want an ace frog dragon? Oh. We can really, like, really get into it here. Oh. Here. Well, someone else heard bangs, so I think you have uh, your pick now. Of you get <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I, I heard bangs as well at first. Oh, no. <laughs> I was a little, I was, I was willing to go with it, but you know what? Bangs aren't for everyone. There we go. He can be our little mascot up in the corner here. Oh, I love that. Well, goodbye to Piper it was, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, Piper. Piper. Um, well, they really like the realistic frog with the fangs. Ah. Um, yeah. Here, we've got him already here. Beautiful. Kind of bangs oh. are we talking about? Right? <laughs> What's the hairstyle that's gonna go with these bangs? Yeah, I'm exactly. Curious. We gotta oh. we gotta think of we gotta think of how he's styling it. Right. Oh, ooh, kind of like a slick look. It looks yeah, like, how how yeah. about a little pompadour kind of oh, I like going it. on? Excellent. <laughs> There we go. Now he's got both fangs and bangs. There you go. Chat, frog right, who has it all. Uh, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> this is the frog. They've got the arrow colors. They've got the fangs. <laughs> they've got the bangs. They've got uh, just being a frog. That's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. Um, mm -hmm. 
You mentioned drawing a dragon, though. I'm sure the chat would love to see that if you've got. Uh, it's true. How would you do a dragon frog? Oh. Let's see. Let's think for a minute. How? Oh, can the dragon be holding a bow and arrow? Uh, Hmm. Is that difficult? <laughs> Probably. Hmm. Oh. Let's see here. I mean, dragons are nice because they can really be anything. That is true. Dragons are kind of everywhere um, in oh, mythology. So they look any kind of way you want them to. Exactly. You can really inspire them off of any creature in the world. Mm -hmm. And I. Let's see. Let's give our dragon shooting an arrow proper form. Nice. Very yeah. important. Very important. All of you um, archers out there, um, you would know. Exactly. <laughs> proper don't, form. Don't judge my uh, drawn form too harshly, though. <laughs> Have you ever done? Hmm? Have you ever done archery before? No, unfortunately. Ah. I would not pass up on an opportunity, but I have not had an opportunity. Fair, fair. I'm sure I, if I looked, I could find one, but... Right. Also, it's a lot of upper arm strength, and that is true. Yeah, yeah. That is not necessarily something that I am is one of my strengths. Yeah, yeah. My legs are for sure more of uh, my strength personally <laughs> than my. I'm a runner, not a not a puller, I guess. But mm -hmm. uh, for all of you out there that uh, like that, uh, good on you <laughs> for having your <laughs> strength, God. Exactly. Oh, well, some people have done archery. Uh, that's cool. Don't judge us too harshly then, chat. Um, yeah, my bow is a little overdrawn here, but we're gonna we're gonna go with it. We'll give them long fingers to compensate. Yeah. It's a it's a dragon, you know, like we're the realism isn't something we're going for necessarily. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Gotta give us some leeway to uh mm -hmm. to make him work. Yes. Let's see. Oh, if you can swing it, chat has suggested the arrow that will be shooting out like this um, has green fire on the end of it. Ooh. Um, they are really feeling it. <laughs> I know. Yeah, they're getting crazy. I love it. Let's see. Let's see here. Get him some wings. Can't have a dragon without wings. Very true. I mean, you can, but not in this space, in That's our creative true. space. <laughs> Well, and then people start arguing about yeah. wyverns and drakes. Oh, no. <laughs> I was definitely a dragon girl in school, so. I could tell. I'm like, yeah. oh, 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 this is bringing yep. up some memories Get, for you. <laughs> getting into the drama. Yeah. yeah. The niche drama of Very dragon neat. typing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is this what you thought you would end up drawing when you came onto stream? You know, I had no idea. I had no idea if we'd get some people asking for centaurs or uh -huh. characters from shows or anything. But you know mm -hmm. what? I am digging the frog dragons. Frog dragons. Oh. This is definitely my idea of fun. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad that you're enjoying yourself too. <laughs> These look great. Let's see, we'll give them a little tadpole tail. Oh, I like that bringing like the the frog back into it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's give him a nice. Yeah, nice. <laughs> uh, his name is Bert. An excellent name. <laughs> a most excellent name for sure. <laughs> Would his full name be Frogbert? Oh. Uh, 
How's that feel to everybody? <laughs> yes. I like it. <laughs> We're going to see whether chat likes it. Yeah. We'll see what, what the consensus is. Yes, they really like it. <laughs> <laughs> We've got all caps. Yes. We've got um, YES kind of drawn out, which in my opinion is uh, um, something to be read as very enthusiastic. A long yes. Mm hmm. Yeah, now people are chanting Frogbert, so you've done something. <laughs> All right. Gotta see the passion. Yes. <laughs> All right, here, let's give them some color here. Yes. Let's see here. Nice. I'm glad we're going for the green theme. Yeah, got to stick with it. We got it. We do have a strong theme going here. So. We do. We do. The chat said it, so <laughs> we should respect the chat. Exactly. Nice. You're going to go for like some contrasting colors, mm -hmm. like the belly. Yeah. Should we do right. white for the belly or do we think the light green? Chat, <laughs> what do you think? White or light green on the belly? Definitely think for the wing membranes and his little tail here, we'll go with the light green. Okay. Mm, we've got we've got some different suggestions in chat. Some are saying white, some light green, some gray. Mm. Oh yeah. Some of the gray stripes. In yeah, yeah. Um no one can decide. <laughs> it's up to you. It's a tough decision. It is, it is. It is. Someone else said mosaic. Um, that's certainly uh, creative. Mm -hmm. Oh, like scales, they say. Oh, interesting. interesting. Okay, okay, okay. Let's do oh, Kinker's little hands here. Yeah, probably after this coloring, we'll be coming up to the end of our time. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah. It went so fast. It did. <laughs> and such amazing things came out of it so far. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, I like this. I like the blend of the gray and the green. Oh, whoops. Can I give him a little bit of flag wings here? Yeah. Yeah, chat likes that. Why don't we do this? Oh, or, hmm. <laughs> decisions, decisions. Indeed, the difficult ones, the coloring decisions. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think or I do see we want to go thing. the other way. Yeah, oops. Very nice. Yeah, people are digging the flag wings. <laughs> Got to work it in there somehow, I think. Yeah. yeah. Let's give it a little bit of that outside green color. Mm. Give it some three dimension, some shape. Mm -hmm. Nice. Give it a little bit of that. Oh, I see what you're doing. You the chat couldn't decide, so you're like, oh, both. <laughs> <laughs> Why not both? Why Let's not work it both? all in there. <laughs> there we go. Sometimes when you can't get decide, it's best to just you know throw it all in there. See what happens. Yeah, exactly. And it's working out beautifully. The chat really, really likes the strike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see if we can get. 
Oh, I see what you're doing like on the flat. Is that called fletching? Yep. Chat? Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Nice. I like this determined expression. I wonder what <laughs> it's firing at. I know. We'll say it's a target. Okay. For target safety's. practice. For safety's sake. <laughs> yeah, this is a safe dragon, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There we go. Nice. Green shoulders back here. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, firing at a matter normativity is what uh, <laughs> someone in the chat says. <laughs> Protecting yeah. us from the expectations of society. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> I love it. On our side there. Yeah. <laughs> go and let's see if we can work in a little fire yes oh i'm glad you remembered that too <laughs> flaming arrows you kind of can't it's hard that's to true yeah it's hard that's to pass true. up on but this is a safe dragon everyone <laughs> that's true these are safe safe fire safe fire 100 percent, of course yes well awesome uh once you finish up we'll be we'll be out of time um, all right yeah. So and I think your... that's about good. So yeah. we can get in a few moments. Awesome. Okay. Well, there you go, chat. You've got um, an arrow tadpole dragon shooting um, green fire at a matter normativity and the expectations <laughs> of society. Uh, <laughs> you've got a realistic frog with fangs and um, really stylish bangs and a hairstyle. Um, <laughs> And we have the frog on an airplane that's the realistic frog's alter ego um, <laughs> that has a top hat, very dapper, an arrow bow tie to match mine, and of course a cactus and a pride flag in the arrow colors. Beautiful. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> oh, awesome. We could well, expect nothing less. Yes, yes, we expect nothing less from the chat. Um, <laughs> Thank you for coming in, uh, Caitlin. It's been awesome to have you. Um, oh, thank you for having me. It was very yeah. fun. Yeah, I'm glad that it was fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, chat if you want to find uh, Caitlin on uh, her other media. Um, do you want to plug that kind of again at the end here? Uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. you guys all can see. Anybody can find me at the Arting Ace, all one word, mm -hmm. written badly up there in script, <laughs> uh, on Twitter, Tumblr, or Instagram. There you go. Like I said, though, Twitter and Tumblr are definitely the places yeah. to find me. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks again so much for tuning in. Uh, it's been awesome to have you. These are great. Uh, <laughs> and that's, that's awesome. I'm taking a screenshot of this for sure. Um, yeah. Um, have Thank a great you. rest of your day. Um, All right. Same to you. Have a great stream. Thanks. I wish everyone a great day. Yeah. All right. See you, Caitlin. Bye. 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 <laughs> Oh gosh. Yeah, I'll wave till you go. There we go. All right. I can do this. I believe in me and technology. I believe in you too. Hey. All right. Well, that brings us up um, over to our break, actually. Um, thanks so much for tuning in for the first half of the stream. Uh, so far, it's been going really awesome. I really love all of your uh, comments and engagement with everybody that's been chatting so far and of course in the art, the collaborative art making in this case. Um, yeah, uh, I'm going to put up a, a nice little break screen for you all so you can know um, when it is break time versus when we all come back. Um, yeah, thank you everybody for coming. Um, we'll be back in about 10 minutes and then we'll start with um, our next guest. So. Um, yeah, stay tuned. Everybody.
Lauren, hi stream. <laughs> oh, I think we're back now from our break. Uh, at least I am. Um, so we're ready to keep on rolling. It's been about 10 minutes ish. Um, yeah, for the next little bit, uh, we're going to have three more independent um, folks, different arrows that are going to be having some general chats and also uh, showcasing some of their more creative work. Um, thank you everyone in the chat who's saying hi and hello again. You've been super active and it's been awesome. Um, I want to give you an update on how our fundraiser is going. Um, we've got $215 raised so far. That's awesome. Y'all are super great. Thank you to everybody who's been donating so far. Um, that's just awesome. Um, we're really excited to be able to represent you and use that for, um, for more of our activism, more of our advocacy, and more of keeping Iraqalypse running um, and yeah, making the community a great community space. Um, so next, uh, we're coming in a little bit early, but um, that's all right, I think, uh, since it looks like most people in the chat are here um, and back. We're going to be going to pivot over to our next guest who goes by a spec of Stardust. Um, she is a passionate um, Arrow Ace side project starter um, who has some things to say about getting involved in the Arrow community, which I think is great for um, following up on some of the conversations we were having with Divinity and with Nick um, a lot earlier on. So let me um, admit her over um, into our call. There we go. Um, and she should be coming in soon. Hey. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> of course I am. Yes. Um, I'm Welcome. Change my screen name. Go for it. Yes. A speck of stardust. Would you like me to say the, the whole thing every time or stardust or anything? Stardust else? is good. Also, okay. Emma is fine. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> All of those work. <laughs> All of it's fine. Yeah. Um, so I guess I can introduce myself. Yes, go right ahead. Um, so I go by a spec of Stardust. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a spec underscore Stardust on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, I also have a blog and I'm on Tumblr and kind of just all over the internet. <laughs> um, but mostly what I've been doing lately has been a lot of just like being online, um, especially during the, you know, time when places aren't allowed. Yes, pandemic time. Oh. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, I um, what else? I've been helping out with the data analysis for yes. the Aero census. Mm -hmm. And I recently took over um, maintaining aerorecommended.org, which mm. is a site where you can um, suggest therapists and um, doctors, mental health professionals, mm -hmm. um, religious and spiritual communities, whatever sort of thing has like service. Been really good for you as an mm -hmm. arrow. Mm -hmm. um, and I put that up on the website. Um, and yeah, it's just a, a resource for, for folks. So that's aerorecommended.org. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah. You do a lot of things. I guess the side project starter is such a good uh, name for you that you can do a lot of <laughs> do a lot I, of really interesting things. I dabble in a lot. <laughs> a dabbler, as one would call a you, a, a little dabbler. Mm -hmm. I like it. Well, first, I would really like to hear more about what you're wearing uh, up on your head. Um, yeah. So this is a flower crown I that it. I knit for an event a few years ago, and I was oh. really happy to have an excuse to wear it again. Yeah. yeah so they're just like little roses and they're all sewed onto a headband um that's yeah. nice yeah i like it i like the, the showing the pride too um that's a big reason i have all of this <laughs> around me yes. and on me um mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. been a little bit more difficult to participate in at least in-person communities uh at the moment um yes. yeah just a bit at least over here uh where we're at um so yeah well, welcome. Um, super awesome to have you um, and really awesome to give some resources also to lots of other folks who are looking maybe for those kinds of services that you're talking about, like professionals essentially to help them out with different things that are arrow friendly. Um, yes. And then, yeah, being in a lot of different community spaces, you probably have a lot to say uh, 
on being in those community spaces. I'd be curious, um, I remember when we were chatting uh, in our 101, one on one, um, about uh, how you used to be part of or leading, I think, a ASPEC group, um, part of your school. Yeah, I'd really like to chat more about that and sort of what what getting started looks like um, with that kind of organization and doing that outreaches and some of the challenges also that you might have um, encountered and how to how to balance essentially different voices of different aspects um, in the same space. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So in undergrad, I started, um, well, sort of restarted. We had an, an existing org, whatever, lots of, lots of red tape details that you all don't need. <laughs> um, but I sort of restarted this um, Aces and Arrows org um, mm -hmm. at my school. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a lot of, the, the biggest challenge, I think, was um, getting the word out there, getting people mm. involved. Um, a big challenge was finding time that everybody could meet or like mm. finding a time that wouldn't exclude people. Um, yeah. I'm sure you've come across this, but scheduling with a big group of people can be really, really challenging. Yes. Um, so that was a big challenge. And then also um, just in terms of getting the org recognized, that's a mm -hmm. big deal um, okay. at a school. And it's gonna look different at every um, college, university, school, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that process is gonna be different. I didn't actually end up completing that process. I graduated mm -hmm. before that sort of all got finished. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, there was a whole wrench thrown in 2020. Um, so, so a lot of the plans that I had made sort of didn't really end up happening. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we did a lot of like discussions. So talking a lot about, mm -hmm. um, coming out, how do you differentiate between different types of attraction? Mm. Um, what else? Like self-acceptance and mm. learning to really because for a lot of people um especially in the arrow and ace communities mm -hmm. learning to sit with that identity can be really challenging for some people right. um and and we have a lot of internalized stuff that we have to deal with so right. right figuring out how to sit with that and be comfortable yep. in it um is definitely something that we talked about mm -hmm. Um, we talked about representation, mm -hmm. um, so not so much in TV and movies, but more in terms mm -hmm. of books. Oh, interesting. Um, lots of lots of books, and we unfortunately don't have a ton of arrow specific representation. Yeah. Um, there is increasingly more ace representation in books, mm -hmm. um, but actually for a spec or arrow spec, excuse me, awareness week. Um, yep. LGBTQ Reads posted an Aerospec um, recommendation list. Yes. So go check that out. Go check that out, y'all, if you're it's into reading. It's pretty cool. Um, and also, I'm just going to take a second to plug Common Bonds, which yes. I had nothing to do with, but it's really fantastic. I'm only halfway through it. Um, it's an anthology of speculative fiction. Yep. And it even has Aromantic on the cover. Like, this is... This is beautiful work. I'm so excited that it exists. Yes. It, it just brings me a lot of joy, you know? Yeah. So go check that out if you have Go check that out, y'all. Um, it is really cool. I've been seeing like it make its rounds uh, on social media. Um, yes. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's really cool. Um, it's fantastic. Oh, <laughs> I feel like fiction is just like such a cool area. It is. It's a really neat, is it a genre? I'm not sure if genre is the right yeah. word for it, but like, yeah, kind of fiction. Um, it's, it just, yep, it is what yeah. it is. Yeah, it fits identity and things like that really well. Um, but anyway, yes, uh, please do tell us more about the things that uh, your group was doing. Um, yeah, what else? Mm -hmm. We did a, oh my God, what did I call it? We, we did like a, a, a 
an event for mm -hmm. Valentine's Day, but like for us. So ah. it, it was not like a Valentine's Day event, but right. we had, and I had such a great name for it. And it was oh, no. absolutely a pun and I cannot remember what it is offhand. Oh, it was if it comes to you, tell us. Definitely. Uh, I will totally let you know. It's going to come to me like tomorrow morning. So I'll tweet about it if I, yes. <laughs> if I remember what it was. Um, or if somebody who knows what I'm talking about, please put it in the chat because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we did that. And there's, so there, there has been, um, I haven't been involved in, in the past like year or so because I graduated, okay. but they've yeah. been doing a lot of stuff online. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure many groups are at least at this point getting better at, at managing, bringing a, a group that was in person right. um, online. So lots mm -hmm. of like Zoom socials and, yep. and webinars and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. One thing that's really great about um, not having as many events in person mm -hmm. is that you can participate in events that are sort of happening all over the place. So I've mm, gotten to do meetup groups that I would never have been able to, to go to otherwise, right? Right, um, right? It would have been like an hour, two hour commute or whatever yeah. to get to that event. And that's probably just not doable for me mm -hmm. um, on, a, on a weeknight. So yeah. Yeah. getting to just roll up from bed in my pajamas is fantastic. I yeah, it, it's accessible, I guess, in that particular way, right? Like yeah. if you're if you're able to access internet somehow, um, then you'll be able to access a lot of interesting groups. And like you said, some are socials, it sounds like, some are more like discussion heavy, some are like mm -hmm. educational, it sounds like, like webinars and things like that. Um, so that's that's pretty neat. Um, being yeah. able to transition online is uh, a challenge, <laughs> but uh, also kind of its own um, uh, interesting endeavor. Uh, uh, its own, I guess, positive, positive yeah. thing. Yeah. And this is also not something I run, but if you're looking mm -hmm. for a meetup group or whatever, yep. acesandarrows.org has a great map of groups. Um, they're yep. mostly in the U.S., mm -hmm. but they are expanding. So if you're yep. looking for a group near you, go check them out. There's um, that. I think Aura lot. also has a, um, if I'm remembering properly, yes, it's got like a list of where some meetup groups are um, around the world as well. So you got, um, you've got, yeah, some of the aces and arrows uh, that are around kind of the states. Um, but if you're looking abroad, like in Germany um, or further east, I think that there was like an LGBT type meetup that seemed to be arrow friendly um, in India as well. Like if you'd like to get in and looking at um, some of those, um, we do try to um, pull all of those together. And if there's a meetup group that, you know, neither of the resources we've mentioned have, definitely reach out to uh, to us and to um, the people who run um, Aces and Arrows as well um, to let us know. Because um, the more the merrier at this point uh, yes. when it comes to kind of in-person um, activism and yeah, in-person um, uh, as opposed to online. Um, so yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I'd be curious, actually, because you've done sort of both of those where you've done kind of in person, um, I guess, uh, meeting up and socials with other ASPEC people. Um, and then you've also been like a pretty uh, active presence uh, online and in those communities. Um, I'm curious if you've got like any insights into what like the differences are and the different like um, pros and cons, essentially, to participating in those kinds of communities. Yeah. Um, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. I find that, at least in my experience, mm -hmm. in in-person groups, people tend to be coming from a lot of different places in their self-discovery journey. Mm -hmm. So in in-person conversations, I end up having a lot more conversations about, um, like, how do you know your arrow? How do you know mm -hmm. that that this identity works for you? How do you come out to people? Mm -hmm. um, what are what are differences in in types of attraction and and where do you find resources and all that kind of stuff right. really sort of um i'm looking for community and i and i don't know where to find it yet and i need some help mm, yeah and also just like finding friends and yes and needing support that way and right. how do i deal with this weird situation that came up or whatever um a lot of a lot of that sort of conversations and online i tend to find and again this might just be like the circles that I'm in, because I've been That's also true. For, yeah. for a while, so it might just be very curated, but um, people tend to be more sort of settled in their journey, 
or at oh, least the people who are speaking up and like engaging in those communities, I Ooh. find um, have identified as arrow or ace or whatever for a while or mm -hmm. um, are more familiar with terminology. Mm -hmm. So um, more conversations about like interactions between gender and um, sexual and romantic orientation. Right. And, um, like what a of normativity looks like right. and all, all that kind of stuff that's not necessarily, wouldn't necessarily be covered in like an era 101. Right, the um, deep stuff. Uh. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I find that the, the deeper stuff tends to come out more online. I that's also right. do find though, and I think this is something that Nick covered mm -hmm. um, earlier, is that sometimes in, in ASPEC communities, mm -hmm. at least in my experience, um, much more so sort of earlier on before mm -hmm. I was more vocal, but, right. but still even um, more recently, yeah. there's there's a lot of like different ideas about what different things mean and, and sort mm -hmm. of what groups um, go where and, and all that yep. kind of stuff. So sometimes it kind of feels like you're walking on eggshells online mm -hmm. of, of like, can I really say this? Like, I don't mm -hmm. know how to phrase this in a way that's not gonna offend somebody. Right. Um, so that also, might sort of be part of um, of why I I see less of the, the questioning like, starting people out online. on your journey and questioning yeah yeah because mm. if people don't feel like they can really have that conversation um, mm. they probably won't. That's a good point, right? If you're in, if you're seeing like that kind of space more, um, especially online, where since it's anonymous, it can be a bit more heated in some cases. Um, and there's a missing tone too, um, in like a lot of text posts. Um, so I can definitely see how that could be, you know, a space that is um, difficult for questioning arrows or people who are trying to learn more about it, um, who maybe have those like internalized, like amount of normativity, heteronormativity, all of that lovely normativity um, stuck in there, right? When they're operating on beliefs that they don't uh, know are harmful, um, it is difficult to come up against um, people who are very tired of having to repeat themselves, right? And being like, oh my God, you have this again. Um, so it is interesting to hear that like, in your experience, at least, um, a lot of in-person spaces, you'll have more of those kinds of conversations, those like introductory, those um, kind of what is the arrow experience like for you sort of uh, conversations. And then online is where people dig really deep and get philosophical. Um, so yeah, <laughs> philosophical is definitely a word I would put um, in the online arrow sphere in the best way, honestly. Um, yeah. 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 I mean we have fantastic conversations. And I think that even just like everybody has so much to learn from the way that um, especially arrows talk about relationships and types mm -hmm. of interaction that I think applies to literally everybody. And I think it has so much to teach us about um, society and mm. what relationships look like mm. and, and what, um, like really what's important for you and right. sort of the things that you take on because you think you have to. Right. Um, I think arrows have so much to teach us about all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. <laughs> yes, big advocate for community involvement basically is, <laughs> is what we're coming to. No, but that is a good point, right? And it's, it's especially interesting because we talk a lot, um, especially here, like you'll all notice in the chat, right? A lot of the, uh, all of the folks really that I've had on today um, so far um, are uh, American um, and are coming from like my time zone. Um, and like I'm Canadian, but it, the cultural difference is not that large between Canada and the US um, and even some other like um, uh, English speaking nations. Um, but when you start going further out into, into Europe, into um, Asia as well, into um, like Africa and different parts, um, you get a lot of different cultural norms that I feel like it would be really, really interesting to get those insights um, in. Uh, I feel like aromanticism and like you said, like the queering relationships that arrows do is uh, such a such an important thing and I think really would be really helpful to a lot of like our cultures and our society's ways of thinking um, and I'm also wondering you know whether that already exists in other places and if 
um, aromanticism there is something um, else to be explored. Um, In-person communities are, and online communities and connections are really great for answering those questions. So um, yeah, yeah, oh, that's awesome. Um, but it is interesting to hear the different um, differences between some of the online um, interactions you've had and some of the in-person ones that you've had as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course that's just my experience. Yes. Uh, and and only the, the places I've been in and the corners of the internet I've been in. So right, right. had a different experience. I would love to hear about it. Yeah, that's also true, right? If anyone in the chat um, has uh, experiences that are different, like I'm, I'm sure they are depending on where you live, whether you're in a city versus whether you're in like a rural area or suburbia um, or you know, what uh, queerness looks like uh, where you live, if it's something that you can be out and open about, or if it's a little bit more like politically charged um, and it's more difficult. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it seems like, <laughs> yeah, it seems like people have had um, different experiences, yeah, um, in their communities. Um, yeah, some people going online, some people meeting arrows in the wild. Uh, um at like a park yeah i guess we exist in the wild too um that's kind of awesome um yeah i i'd love to hear like how you even got to getting involved because i know there are a lot of uh folks who want to be involved in different arrow side projects and you've been that's like your thing where you you get involved in things um but they're not really sure how to start or how to get involved do what was your experience? Um, um, well, I didn't do these sorts of like ASPEC side projects for a really long time. I've been mm. out or like out to some some people for right. six or seven years at this point, um, which makes me feel really old. <laughs> it's it's, it's really fine. <laughs> um, no, it's fine. Um, but I definitely wasn't super active in mm -hmm. communities for a while. Um, mm -hmm. my, my big foray into ASPEC side projects was yeah. uh, getting that student work going. Mm -hmm. um, and then also like missing out on that when I mm -hmm. lost the in-person aspect of things. Mm -hmm. um, but like what I started doing, something I started doing before that actually was contributing to the Carnival of Arrows and the Carnival mm -hmm. of Arrows. Um, yeah. Those are fantastic. If you're not familiar with them, they are a blogging carnival. So someone yep. um, hosts a topic every month and you can contribute your blog post or whatever. Um, and if you don't have a platform, you can contribute anonymously too. So that's yep. really great. Um, so I started out just as um, submitting things every once in a while. Mm -hmm. um, and then I decided, you know what? I could host something. I have an idea for a topic and, and I could host this. So mm -hmm. I hosted the Carnival of Aces in June for Pride and my theme mm -hmm. was Pride and what that looks like um, because that was weird last year. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying not to say things look a little different right now because that that's so overused. Yeah, I get you. I hate hearing it. Um, but anyways, um, and then I hosted in this. December? Yes, I believe it was December. <laughs> One of those months, um, the Carnival of Arrows, and my topic was Happily Ever After. Um, if you, you should go check out the, the Roundup post. There were some really great submissions. Um, very cool. So if you're looking to get involved in the community more, would definitely recommend um, either submitting to or hosting Mm -hmm. um, either of those carnivals. Um, well, mm -hmm. specifically for this audience, the Carnival of Arrows. Yep. Um, I am both arrow and ace, so things sort of just kind of jumble up for me. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Sometimes the ace back experience is like that. Right? They're just yeah, kind of... All, all the different colors on the headband. It, for me, it just really sort of all mm -hmm. meshes together. Um, mm -hmm. But I know it's not like that for everybody. Right, right. Um, other things... Yeah, something else I started doing was using hashtags ASPEC content and ASPEC research. Mm. Um, for Pride, last year I did one post a day on Twitter about um, someone who's publishing about ASPEC research 
or um, writing articles or making YouTube videos, whatever I did mm -hmm. today for the whole month. Um, and that wasn't something that I had to like figure out how did I just was like, I'm just going to do this. And I just kind of, <laughs> <laughs> there's your advice chat. Just, just go do it. <laughs> just do it. Um, if, if there's a project you are interested in or like something you would like to be seeing, um, just do it. Yeah. It's really easy. I think in my experience as well to reach out, I think a big reason I didn't get involved in a lot of things was just because everything seemed so official and kind of fancy um, and like people were doing their things well and I was like I I don't know what I'm doing really I'm just I'm just a re irregular arrow here I'm not really sure what I can do or what I can contribute but um, as somebody who reads and participates and has hosted also like the carnival of arrows um, and some of these other like hashtag um, uh, parties, I guess I would say, right? Um, hashtag events. It's really meaningful uh, to, like, as a reader, to see those kinds of experiences. Even like, even the really, um, like, quickly written up, like, ranting in the tags kind of Tumblr posts. Those are still really, really valuable um, to me and to a lot of other arrows. Just as valuable as people you know, philosophizing about things and putting uh, things together. So don't worry about being like super articulate um, or super fancy in any way. Um, everybody loves that. There's so little content out there um, about us that having more is not gonna be worse. Um, it's gonna, yeah, exactly. It's gonna make everything better. And in terms of getting involved, right? Um, just like Stardust was saying, right? Like just just go reach out. Um, it's scary, right? To write in an email, you know, what email do I use even my personal one that says like fairy princess 100 at Hotmail, like what do, <laughs> but like most people, um, at least in the queer community I've seen and especially um, in the Arab communities that I've been in, um, they don't really care about that, where you're coming from. They care about your ideas um, and they care about like you as a human being and what you can contribute. So just reaching out and saying, hey, I'm not really sure how to volunteer, but I'd like to do this. Or like, hey, I'd like to host this event. Um, I have this idea, but what, what really do I need to do it, right? Like, what are the resources I need? Um, most likely you'll get people responding to that very enthusiastically. No one really is gonna judge you, um, in my experience. The people that are doing big things, they're far from judgmental people, so. Um, reach out, <laughs> do the thing. <laughs> and events, um, like big events, campaigns, yep. social media things, everything needs people, right? So yep. um, just like if you see something about, hey, I need, I'm looking for people to help out with whatever mm -hmm. event I'm doing, whatever, whatever. Um, yeah. Just like reach out and be like, hey, I can contribute an hour a month, or I can I can help moderate this uh, panel that you're doing, or right. I can help with this one-time thing, and that's mm -hmm. kind of my limit. Um, that's great. Just reach out, and you definitely have some skills that that you can contribute in some way. Yeah, definitely. That'll be really meaningful. Yeah. Um, also, in terms of the what email do I use? Just make a new email. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is your chance. I want to do something on Twitter, but I don't really want to put it on my, like my Twitter. Yeah. Uh, so I made a new Twitter <laughs> and, um, and I was like, I don't know, I don't want to email somebody with like my personal email. So I just made a new email. Um, and it's like another thing to check, but like, I have so many tabs open anyways, it's not a big deal to have one more email. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's a very relatable mood. Yeah. <laughs> many tabs open all the time. It's so hard. Um, but yeah, that's sort of my advice with, with getting started in something, um, yeah. just to kind of go for it. Yeah, and there's someone in the chat too that um, said they joined the Queer Education Project specifically because they didn't cover aromanticism. And I think that's also something that you can look for, right? If you have a like local queer center, right? An LGBT center, or you've got, um, like an A spec group, but you've seen it, it's kind of like acentric, even though they say A spec, like putting your foot forward and and saying, like, hey, I think I can contribute more of the arrow perspective. And here's what 
um, you can learn from us in our community that interacts with yours, right? There is a lot of solidarity to be found as we've been talking about throughout between all these different communities um, in terms of relationshiping, especially in terms of, um, yeah, being yourself and uh, coming to terms with society's expectations of you and what you actually live. Uh, that's, that's all really relatable for everybody, regardless of where they're coming from. So if you want to get involved, um, definitely look for spots where you could slot aromanticism in. And if you want help to, um, even saying on like social media or something, hey, I'm doing this thing, <laughs> do any other arrows <laughs> want to help with it? Um, a lot of people who are looking for something to do um, will jump on that. So um, yeah, that's another piece of um, advice that I'd like to throw out there for anyone who can't see the chat. Um, yeah. Well, we're coming uh, close to the end of our time. So I guess, thanks so much uh, for, for coming in. Any last thoughts you have that you want to broadcast to our audience uh, in terms of the Arrow experience, being a side project starter um, and continuer as well, because you start them and you do continue <laughs> most of them. So some of them kind of get lost. Yeah. It happens. Yeah, I think that's a good lesson to take away too. Um, so. Another thing is that like side projects don't have to be um, like, it doesn't have to be, I'm going to do this all the time forever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It can be, I'm going to do this like a little bit sometimes. Yeah. Um, and that's great. Like even just like a little something occasionally is yeah. fantastic. It's more than nothing. Um, Definitely. Don't have to like, do something really huge. It can be, it can be small. It can be really whatever scale um, works for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's good advice, right? You get to choose your boundaries when interacting with the community and helping out with the community. Uh, you don't have to go so hard. Uh, you can pop in every so often when you want to and can. Um, yeah. yeah, that's great advice. Well, thank you again, um, ASPEC of Stardust for coming in and telling us a little bit about, you know, the community experience and different ways people can get involved. Um, it's awesome. I'll be chatting with you uh, in the census team <laughs> since we'll be doing that um, over on the side. But um, yeah, uh, thank you so much <laughs> for, yeah, for coming for in. Me. Yeah, of course. Um, all right. I'll, I'll see you soon uh, in Quiplash yes. as well. Yes. I'm so, ready. I'm yes. Excited. I'm nope. glad. I'm, I'm feeling less ready as I've had all of you on here. You're all very uh, coherent and articulate today. And I'm like, oh boy. We've been doing this all day. We're just all on for like half an hour at a time. That is true. That is true. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. All right. See all you right. later. Take care. Yes. Take care. I'll see you. Awesome. All right, well, thanks again to Ace Back of Stardust for coming in. Um, apologies for this weird lighting I see I've got going on, but uh, um, that is the reality of sunset in my location. Happy sunset to any of you who are also experiencing it or sunrise. Actually, I hope none of you are experiencing the sunrise, but um, there you go. That's just a heads up. Um, everything is fine. Um, before we pivot, um, I just wanted to, um, uh, piggyback off of what we were just talking about in terms of getting involved in the community. Um, Aurea is a pretty big resource. Um, we're always looking for more volunteers and team members. Um, so if you want to get involved that way as well with stuff that we're doing, um, we have uh, a couple of calls for volunteers and for uh, team members as well that have been out recently. Um, you can see that on our website. Um, We've got um, some information about kind of who specifically we're looking for um, and what, um, what kinds of roles uh, we're really in need of to fill on our main team, um, as well as sort of our peripheral team, because we've got uh, our main team who does um, like articles, things like this, events like this, man managing finances, um, managing, um, of course, keeping in touch with other people and organizations. Um, but we've also got our translators We've got our Aero Census team. Um, we've got um, a number of uh, different things that we would like to do um, and initiatives that we really want to get going on, but we're missing um, the people who have those perspectives um, that we just don't have on the team. So 
definitely head on over um, if you're interested in that. Um, we also ask you, you know, how much of a commitment you're able to make. So don't worry if you're not uh, able to do kind of like a full-time team member thing. Um, uh, it's definitely all right to let us know that you're interested, but um, have limited time. Um, we'd still love to hear from um, hear from you all. All right. Next, what I'm going to be doing um, is introducing um, another creative we saw earlier with Caitlin, um, a uh, artist and illustrator, um, and she was doing live drawing for you. Um, our next creative is um, Shade Oyama Kinwa. Um, they are an airway STEMI girl writer, podcaster, and puppeteer, multi-talented person. Um, today, they're gonna be showcasing some of their creative work in um, an audio and visual format. Uh, what they did was they sent along a recording of their piece since it has those multiple components uh, for this individual part, but you will be seeing them live um, later on during our Quiplash game. Um, and they're one of the Quiplash veterans on um, the, the team and uh, guest list that we have here. So um, look out for them later. Um, but let me pull up that recording for you all so that you can see. Um, and then I will essentially let <laughs> should I take it away in uh, in the past, I suppose it's pre-recorded. Um, let me share that with you and make sure I share sound with you all as well. Um, awesome. All right. So I'll mute myself for this uh, section so that Shadi can take it away, especially since it's a storytelling and audio visual segment. Um, but I do hope you enjoy um, what they've got to offer for Hello all, I'm Shade Oyama Kinwa, and I'm a storyteller. So today I've prepared three tales for my podcast, Fairy Tale Tidbits. It's my Patreon exclusive podcast where each week I must create, record, and share a fairy tale or a fairy tale adjacent thing of my own creation. It's currently on a hiatus. And we'll return at some point after my public podcast, Come On In The Water's Fine, premieres its third season this May. Third season's gonna be Space Mermaid, so I am very excited. Quick bit of housekeeping. My website is crownprincessproductions.wordpress.com. There you can find info about my podcasts and the transcript for the video you're watching right now. It'll be located under the Fairy Tale Tidbits tab. All right, here we go. A cattail, or sitting on a fence post waiting for some fish. The cat sat on the fence post. They wanted fish. Whoever gave them fish, they swore to give them untold blessings beyond anything they could imagine. A weary warrior decided to rest along the road that the fence bordered. Well, hello, little friend. I see you too have excellent taste in resting places. Here, let us eat together as comrades. The warrior broke off a piece of cheese and some bread for the cat, and ate as the cat did. Once the cat had finished the offering. It lifted its head and said, Thank you. One kind turn deserves another. Further along this road, you will find a monster that has been terrorizing the local village. Swords and other weaponry will not kill it. Before you reach the monster, you will come across a young sapling with a dead branch full of drying leaves. You must break off the branch and sharpen it to a point. 
This alone will kill the monster. The villagers will offer you gold and jewels and gratitude for your heroism. Accept none of it, but only ask for the two greatest treasures of the late widow Tarsi. The warrior thanked the cat again and again and went on their way. The cat sat on the fence post. The cat still wanted fish. They swore to give untold blessings beyond anything they could imagine to whoever just gave them some fish. The next day, a young person, nondescript with nothing particularly special about them, came to the cat's fence post and decided to rest near there. Well, hello, little cat. I thank you for being my companion for the short rest on my long journey. The young person pulled out some jerky from the traveling satchel and gave a small piece to the cat. The young person rested her feet and ate her jerky while the cat licked, licked, licked the small piece of jerky clean gone. Once the cat was done with the offering, it said, Thank you. One kind turn deserves another. You seek your fortune. It does not lie further down this road, but through the forest. You must walk straight ahead toward the point on the horizon that I face. If you come across a stream, do not go around and find a dry spot to cross. Cross there. If you come across a ravine, do not seek a bridge further down either side. Cross there. Climb down if you must, but cross there. If you do all this, you will find your way to a golden palace. Enter during the day. If you reach it at night, you must wait until the sun has risen and fully left the horizon. Once in the palace, drink only water you have taken from the well yourself. Drink only wine you have prepared yourself. Eat nothing there until the bellkeeper has woken up from their slumber. The young person thanked the cat again and again and went on her way, toward the point in the horizon the cat had shown them. The cat sat on the fence post. The cat still wanted fish. Oh, if only they could have just a little fish, they would give untold blessings beyond anything they could imagine to whoever gave them fish. The next day, a small child came along, playing. No in particular they wanted to go. The child spotted the cat and was delighted at the sight. What a beautiful kitty you are! You're so wonderful! Stay right there! And the child ran off. It wasn't long before they returned with a piece of cloth in hand. Once near the cat again, they slowly opened the cloth so as not to startle the cat, and inside the cloth was a piece of smoked fish. The cat gobbled it up, and the child scratched behind the cat's ears, and the cat let them. Finally, the cat had received fish Delicious, delectable smoked fish. With joy in the cat's heart, they delivered untold blessings upon the child. The cat purred, and the child scratched the cat's ears, and the cat let the child scratch its belly, 
and the cat sat in the child's lap and purred, and the child was unbelievably happy and cooed at the pretty kitty. Do you want to go home with me, kitty? My family has a big barn where you can catch mice, and we have lots more fish. The child stood a bit away from the cat, and when the cat walked up to them, the child beamed. Walking home with the cat in tow, the child spoke excitedly about the life the cat would lead in their home. The cat was pleased. The child had given them fish, and in return, the cat had played with them, sat on their lap, purred at them, and would now live in their farmhouse and be their companion. The cat had promised untold blessings beyond anything they could imagine, and the cat had obviously delivered. In which everyone is far too kind and sensible, and it puts Usadora in a much worse mood. Usadora was sick of it. She was sick of it all. She had been in the most terrible mood for weeks now, and it looked as if there was no sign of it getting better any time soon, and chances of it getting much worse. All Usadora wanted to do was fight and spit and rage and do terrible things to terrible people who deserved it, but she had yet to meet anyone who deserved it. Everyone she came across was so nice and kind and obliging. Any ask for a bit of food or a ladle of water was readily and happily given. In some cases, she needn't ask at all. So, of course, what could she do but reward their kindness with gold or magical items? which is fine for a time. But when you're in a bad mood, with no bad people to take it out on, it can grow very annoying, very quickly. Usadora grew so spiteful, she took to dropping wish-granting items in rivers and forests in hopes that some fool would use it poorly and make a mess of things. No such luck. Everyone who found her items had such sensible and simple wishes. One woman wished for a large sausage, but instead of being angry with her and wishing it was stuck to her nose, her wife only happily cut it up and used it in that evening's meal. Usadora was so angry she could cry. In searching for a suitable place to be angry and cry, Usadora fell upon a person who had much the same idea they had. This person was crying and seemed so mad that Usadora couldn't help but feel better just at the sight of them. Usadora was feeling quite silly at being the only angry person they saw and feeling silly had made them feel all the more angry. Usadora called out to them and asked if they'd like some company to properly complain to. Well, said the stranger, yes, actually. Everyone around me is being most impossible. My family is behaving horribly. And whenever I explain this to strangers, all they can say is that it's bound to get better any day now. But I'm not complaining about any day. I'm complaining about today. Usadora calmly listened to all the person complained of and agreed that what this person dealt with was terrible. Without breaking stride in their complaints, the person offered Usadora some of their bread, cheese, and wine, which Usadora happily accepted. Well, thank you so much for listening. I feel oh so much better now that I've had a chance to properly get it out. 
Do you have anything you wish to complain about? No one ever comes to this clearing unless they need a place to be in a bad mood. You said Dora did find they would like to complain, and complained of how few terrible people they met, and how annoying it was that everyone they met was so kind and sensible. They knew and believed that it was good to have so many kind and sensible people in the world. But there were still bad people, and it seemed terribly unfair that Usadora couldn't find any. The stranger agreed that this was a most inconvenient and frustrating situation to be in. By the time they had finished the bread, cheese, and wine, the two were in much higher spirits. The stranger thanked Usadora for her kindness, and Usadora thanked the stranger for their kindness in turn. Usadora attempted to grant the stranger a wish, but the only thing they wished for was for Usadora to visit them in the clearing again next week so they might complain and eat cheese together again. Of course, another kind and sensible person. Although, this time, Usadora didn't seem to mind at all. A King's Folly The king of a prosperous kingdom wished to have a great temple built in his honor along the riverbank that bordered the capital city. He contracted three brothers to build it in exacting and extravagant detail. The brothers were famous for their beautiful craftsmanship and ingenious design. Before beginning, the three brothers told the king their fee for such a job. It was a long and complicated job, so their fee was great. The king assured them that their fee was of no consequence. The three brothers built the temple, and it was magnificent. The king was quite pleased with their progress, but right before the last of the temple was completed, the three brothers went to the king for their payment, as was agreed upon. The king did not want to pay what he had agreed to, and said he would only pay them a much lower price. The brothers were outraged and refused to complete the project unless they were paid properly. The king laughed at this. He had seen the temple. It looked amazing. What more was there to be done? Assured that what was left was of no consequence, the king scoffed at the brothers and told them to leave their work incomplete so he need not pay them at all. Well, one night it rained. It rained a great deal, and the river flooded and the gutters surrounding the temple had not been properly installed. You see, the brothers had waited to install the gutters until after they were paid. They had been laid out, ready for installation as soon as they were paid. But they were not paid, and the king and all who might pass saw gutters in their proper place. The temple flooded, tapestries ruined, supplies washed away, and no one but the three brothers knew how to install the gutters. Apparently the gutters were of their own special design. Well, the king sent for them to ask for their help, and sent along the money they were owed for building the temple. They gladly took the money they were owed, but of course there would be a fee for draining the temple, a fee for repairing flood damages, and a fee 
for being late with their first rightfully due payment. Once all that was paid up front, they would be happy to begin work on this new project. And that's it. <laughs> that's me. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed my collection of fairy tales. And the song I used was Carpe Diem by Kevin MacLeod. And I'm LMO Creates on Twitter. That's all I got. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. All right, so that was Shade Oyama Kinwa uh, with their brilliant, brilliant work um, and their awesome storytelling, their awesome stories. Um, it sounds like a lot of people really uh, vibed with and felt related uh, to a lot of these stories. Me too. Um, when I had heard them for the first time, definitely like the middle story of Yusudora, especially. I don't know, something about that one was something I really vibed with, but thank you to Shade again for um, their awesome talent. Uh, they are brilliant, they're a wonderful creator. Um, they said as well where you can find them um, on Twitter and also uh, Crown Princess Productions, um, quite easy to find them. Uh, it seems like the chat is very, very uh, excited about the space mermaids that uh, Shade will be coming out with. Um, in their work. Um, me too. <laughs> me too. Um, and yeah, that that's, that's it for Shade, definitely. Um, thank you all for tuning in for that. And thank you to Shade as well for sending that to me and um, going through all of the, um, the techie bit of setting all of that up. Um, a update from the Speaking of techie side of things from the Aurea team, there is a designation for the fundraiser now on um, in the donation box. We're still tracking um, donations that are made to Aurea or to Aerocalypse uh, as uh, donations today, at least from uh, as donations from this fundraiser stream. But if uh, you weren't sure which one of those to uh, put into, you can put now um, the fundraiser. Um, as the designation for where your money is going to go. And that's going to be split evenly um, between us, Aurea, and also Aerocalypse. So next, uh, if you're going to donate, feel free to um, uh, do so when you can, if you can. Um, that's just a heads up for you all um, that you can find the fundraiser designation in our donation page. Um, yeah, it's just going to make us easy, uh, life for us a little bit easier. Uh, when we get into splitting that up and thank you to everybody who has donated so far i'm really really excited about that um yeah i guess as a closing to that before we introduce our final guest uh, it's just really awesome to see arrows out there creating really compelling pieces um, i'm glad i got to show some of you some of the awesome talent that we have in the form of live drawing earlier when caitlin was on and uh, now something recorded written and uh researched as well by uh, Shade. Hard work and time consuming in two different ways. Uh, chaotic and cursed both in, in some sense and beautiful in other senses in both of those cases too. Seems like that's an Aero tradition, perhaps a queer tradition of just creating. So perhaps I will say more thank yous and things like that to when I have Shade uh, live later for Quiplash. But with that, we are at the end of their time, and we're going to pivot over to our final guest for the day, which is Momo. Uh, Momo is the administrator of the Aerocalypse forums, which we've been sort of talking about and saying are our partners throughout the stream. We've partnered with them for our event today. So now I'm going to let Momo in, uh, and we can hear uh, from her. Here we go. There we go, she's coming in, connecting to audio. 
All right. Hello. Hey, I can hear you well. Can you hear me well as well? Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So thank you. Momo, for coming in. Um, I love your background. I love that you put that <laughs> together. It's so good. Um, the uh, Yeah, I don't have like... a camera. Yeah. I, I, I just wanted to say thank you, Shade. I have no idea how I'm going to follow that, but thank you very much. That was amazing. <laughs> very talented, very talented. Yeah. Um, do you want to explain, I guess, the very first thing, what your uh, picture and all of that, what that means, all those little... Uh, sure. So yeah. um, the uh, the background image is uh, peach blossoms. Um, Momo is a name, uh, means peach. So yeah, that's where that Makes comes sense. from. Makes sense. I love that. Um, yeah. So then the flags I've got along the top are... Mm -hmm. Uh, the arrow flag, everyone should recognize that, non-binary and um, nebula romantic. Right, awesome. Well, thank you for that. Could you give us a little bit, I guess, uh, on, of a definition, your definition of nebula romantic, you said the last one was, for the chat. Yeah, um, so nebula romantic is very similar to choir romantic, if anyone's familiar with that, but basically, wow. mm -hmm. um, struggle understanding romance as a concept um yeah um the difference with nebula romantic is that it's tied to uh neurodivergence specifically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah so you're like neurodivergent experience i'm autistic specifically personally mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah well, thank you for tuning in. And I might ask you more on that later. And if the chat has any questions about that to follow up, also definitely let us know. It's great to have you, especially yeah. because you're coming from Australia and it is early for you. <laughs> uh, I'm not American, yay. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, bless you for coming in. Uh, that's, <laughs> you're great. Um, it's super awesome to have you. Um, yeah. Well. First, I wanted to chat with you a little bit um, about the forums since you're, you've stepped up recently as the administrator of them and we've talked about them a bit for people recently, who don't it's know. It's almost been a year now. It doesn't yeah. feel like a year. Yeah, well, that's the time. That's how time is passing right now, I think. Um, this last year especially, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so tell us, I guess, a bit about what the forums are, uh, at least to you, how you... I mean, uh, the forums to me, um, well, personally, it mm -hmm. was one of my first um, exposures to aromanticism. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, that's that's a whole story unto itself, of course. But um, like, that's, that's where I started really digging into aromanticism. It's a place for people to meet and talk and... Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of people there all the time, but yeah, mm. like it's it's there. It's an important place for me personally. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah, it's a great online community. Um, it is funny how many of us um, in all of these different spaces we are in know each other from there uh, <laughs> or some offshoot of the forums. <laughs> um, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, but I'm glad that you at least uh, are administrating it and um, are continuing that, keeping that community space for people to socialize, even if infrequently. Um, uh, it's a nice space. Um, I'm curious because yeah, you said, oh yeah, go ahead. No, I was just agreeing with you. Ah, gotcha. Um, I'm curious because you said a you had a bit of a story of coming uh, into finding uh, the air forums, the Aerocalypse forums. I'm curious if you're um, willing to share that story. I mean, um, I mean, in retrospect now, and then I'm just thinking about this, like literally a second, yep. but um, the whole the nebula romantic things probably actually um, contributed a lot because mm. when I originally started exploring like, um, being queer in general, mm -hmm. uh, probably about five years ago now, I originally came via um, pansexual. Mm. Um, because if 
and this is a sentiment I've heard others express too, but <laughs> if you if you love everyone equally, but you don't necessarily love anyone, the the, the, the two definitions kind of overlap a lot. Yes, you <laughs> um, were saying something like that with like bi as well, right? You're kind of like, well, it's so easy to go into the bi and the pan community because it's they're very it's, similar in that yeah. way. Um, and like historically, I've always had a an attraction it's kind of mm. hard for me to define these days mm. um i've been in a few romantic relationships over my life i was mm. in one when i discovered aromanticism mm. um mm. and that that discovery actually helped me sort out that relationship um mm. into something that's been a lot more healthy for the both of us actually so that's yeah. that's been really good mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I went by pan to mm -hmm. ace because I'm ace as well. Mm -hmm. um, though these days it doesn't come up that much. Mm. Um, and ace led me to Avon, which mm -hmm. didn't really feel right for a lot mm. of reasons. Um, mm -hmm. And then I eventually found Rockalypse when I was looking for aero specific stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That must be nice, stumbling upon like an aero specific resource. I guess when did you find that? Like how many years ago oh, was that now? Geez. Uh, I <laughs> think it's about three years now. Okay, three years ago, yeah. right. And then you've been administrating, I guess, for almost one. Just um, shy of a year. It was March yeah. sometime last year. March, yeah, and we're getting into March now too. Dang, yeah, that is quite a while. Yeah, it's yeah. the last day of February where I am. Sorry. That's true. Yes, you are ahead of <laughs> us in the future. Um, ASAW is over for you. So now you, I guess, get to participate in this stream and have an really extra. Celebrate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're welcome in that case, I guess. Um, it works out. That's awesome. Um, I guess I'm curious also about uh, participating in an online community like this and being an admin, right, is a pretty unique experience. How what are the things that led you led up to that um, becoming? I mean, um, I mean, I know, but for the chat, you know. <laughs> yes. uh, so about a year ago, the previous admin, um, Blue Phoenix, needed mm -hmm. to step down. Mm -hmm. I don't think they ever went into reasons why, but mm -hmm. they they had to step down for personal reasons, I presume. Right. Um, they they had been a little bit of an absentee admin for a while. Mm. Um, so they put out a call for new staff. And mm -hmm. at the time there was responses from some Avon people, some of the mm -hmm. Arocalypse um, people, mm -hmm. um, like the community um, right. got involved. I was part of that partnered up with some of the Aurea team members mm -hmm. um, and we got things back under control. Um, I've I've personally been reasonably hands off. I'm more mm. of a facilitator role at this point, um, mm. helping the moderators with what they need and mm -hmm. doing final arbitration if mm -hmm. that can is necessary. Thankfully, right. it comes up pretty infrequently. So. Yeah, so it's a good system and a good team that you've um, managed to collect together over some time, right? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm curious, like, what I suppose made you uh, go into this admin role in the first <laughs> place? <laughs> Just what really pushed you? I mean, you? so professionally, I'm an IT worker. So I do go. programming and server admin like as a job. So mm -hmm. this is something that I'm familiar with. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, like it's, Makes sense. it's something set. I could take care of. Mm -hmm. um, financially, I'm in a good position and I mm -hmm. tend to pay for a lot of the stuff that the forum needs because we historically haven't gotten many donations. Right, um, right. But yeah, um mm -hmm. so that was it like i had the skill set i had the cash to fund it so right and i guess it was a 
good space for you. You mentioned that. Yeah, and like I said, it it ha it meant something to me that it continued to exist. So. Right. Right. Um, well, I'm glad that you're in that position. Uh, it's working out <laughs> for all of us too that are on the forums uh, and chatting with each other and make it, it's in a way giving back the good experience that you've had with it so far. Um, yeah, exactly. Giving us a chance to have uh, some experience. It looks like there are other arrows in tech, by the way, that are saluting you. So um, <laughs> <laughs> just a heads up about that. Um, that's awesome. And a, a big thank you. And they're also um, fans of having um, an Australian actually here, uh, a non-American sort of accent. Um, it's nice to hear. So good yeah. job. You're clicking the box. Non-American. <laughs> yes, non-American. Because yeah. I'm in the Americas, let's be honest, right? Like it's still, we're yeah. still kind of in there. Um, yeah, that's funny. Um, well, so now I'd like to pivot over a little bit to um, you, I guess, as a person, <laughs> um, because we know a little bit about you and being in the administrator role and some of the mod team as well from Aerocalypse, but um, you being an Arrow too, and especially being like Nebula Romantic uh, and having like a particular uh, intersection of identities, that's all really interesting. I'd like to poke you a bit uh, if you're up for it. Um, yeah, sure. So, yeah, good. tell us about your Arrow experiences and your identities. Um, so you mentioned Nebula Romantic. Um, some people in the chat really liked, um, that was a new term for them um, and really liked your explanation of it. I'm curious how your journey with that even began. How did you come across this? <laughs> um, it's such a niche, um, um, niche thing. Yeah, uh, I found the term on um, Tumblr originally. Mm, Tumblr. Um, yeah, that mm. uh, website. Like, that let's website. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I don't use it a lot anymore, but that's where I found it originally. Um, mm. And it was good. I connected with some other Nebula Romantic people and mm, okay. kind of, um, yeah, kind of clicked and um that's where i ran into it really mm -hmm. um, on tumblr explored it a little bit mm -hmm. did you find the term first or was it kind of like people talking about their experiences and then the term um how did you or if you remember oh. even <laughs> yeah no i i actually don't remember now yeah. <laughs> um and to be completely honest, it's not a term that I use all that much, but mm, in a space like this, I, it made sense to include. But yeah, um, for me, the the micro labels are an interesting thing for me. Um, mm. Like it's it's accurate, but it's um, it, it's because it is such a niche term. It's if I'm going to use it with someone, it typically means I have to explain it anyway. So I'll often just give the explanation. Right. Um, and just say I'm Aero to most mm. people. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, that's a very big mood, I would say. A very relatable <laughs> thing. Just even because sometimes even in aerospaces, right, when you have like more, I guess, niche uh, or identities that aren't, I guess, as big or well-known, like Demi or Gray, for example. Um, when you get down to those smaller ones and those micro labels and those micro identities that make sense to you, um, but others don't necessarily know about, it can be interesting <laughs> to uh, try to explain your personal experiences to even arrows. Um, mm. And then beyond that is uh, um, a whole other story. Um, and generalizing to arrow makes perfect sense, I would say, in your case. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that is that is an interesting point. Um, yeah. What what drew you, I think, to to keeping that label? Because you said you don't use it that much or that often anymore, but you do have it here on this very. Big I, platform. I have it here. Um, <laughs> just. I I mean, this is a reasonable platform to help popularize it, hey? Eh? Um, mm, but fair. <laughs> also, in, also in like profiles and stuff, I'll have it 
there just for the people who do know what it is or maybe mm. help um, shine some light for people who don't. They can right. look it up. Um, right. So those more passive ways, I guess, of yeah. um, telling people who I am, um, that's right. where I tend to use it a little more. Right. That makes sense. Um, there was something that I can't remember which guest said it now because I've been on here for a few hours, but someone was saying how um, having those identities sometimes is just, it's almost important for other people to see their, themselves represented um, in, yeah. in those spaces. It might have been Divinity who said that, um, but creating that being yourself in that kind of space and um, showing others yourself as well is almost a kind of like you said passive way of <laughs> of educating and advocating and getting the word out there uh, about what different experiences are um, within the Arrow community and then beyond as well um, yeah that's that's pretty cool um, it looks like a lot of people in the chat are um, or a couple people in the chat rather are very much agreeing that uh, when meeting particularly people who aren't queer um, or even are queer but don't know about A-spec identities, let alone aromanticism, um, they'll speak more um, in general terms, like saying that they're arrow, uh, kind of full stop, but then when speaking to somebody who is queer or somebody who does actually know things, um, then they'll be more specific. Does that kind of mirror? It sounds like yeah. that mirrors your experience. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I wonder if like there is a there is a positive to being specific or trying to be specific with people that you're not usually specific with. Um, I don't know. Um, it's hmm, micro labels in their place. Maybe. Right? Yeah, like mm -hmm. they 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 certainly have their place, um, yeah. they, and they're not for everyone. But right. if if they're helpful, use them. Um, right. and in the situation where I'm not necessarily actively involved in telling people like they, right. they can provide extra context and help right. for me. So mm -hmm. why not? Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I think that that's a, yeah. People in the chat but, mood, mood. <laughs> but, uh, but in the situation where I am actively involved, then yeah, like just, I, I usually don't bother. Right, right. That makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing that that bit about you. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's always interesting to hear, you know, especially like different interactions between your identities, right? Being like an autistic person and also being an arrow person and how those end up interacting in some way. You yeah, mentioned... that's right. Mm -hmm. No, go on. Oh, I was just saying, you mentioned that uh, those together um, and having attraction of some sort that is nebulous. Uh, oh, perhaps nebula actually makes sense for uh, that name now that I think of it. But that's yeah, hmm. yeah. That that that's kind of where it came from. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's just really interesting. <laughs> not not so. Just to clarify, not um, all nebula romantics will have a have an attraction. But yeah, mm -hmm. like that that feeling of not understanding mm -hmm. being nebulous like that's that's all tied up there yeah yeah it makes sense almost like people name micro labels in a way that makes yeah. sense uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow <laughs> who knew that's great um but yeah and just that's always interesting to hear about intersecting identities and we've seen a little bit of that on the stream too like some people who are arrow and ace and who are separate, who are aloe and arrow, and those are very distinct identities um, versus like an arrow ace we had who those just kind of go together um, and are inseparable. Um, it happens with other identities too, right? Like it happens with gender, it seems it happens with yeah. um, divergence. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so like um, I've only got um, non-binary on the picture here, but right. like specifically I'm a gender and mm. my feelings towards gender almost mirror my feelings towards um, romance. Like they're, they're concepts that I, gen, 
You were saying earlier that you felt everyone was so clear and I was just thinking to myself, <laughs> just wait till I get on now. I'll, yeah. I'll make you feel better. Don't worry. It's okay. You're doing great, Momo. Um, um, the, the, both gender and romance mm -hmm. are concepts that I struggle to like, understand. Like, romance right. in particular, it's... It's something that I've only ever personally been able to explain in terms of intention, because a lot mm. of the things I do are quote unquote romantic coded, mm. but I don't want a romantic relationship and I'm not doing them romantically or they're things you might do with friends. Right. Like, mm -hmm. And it's always been hard for me to explain mm -hmm. outside of that context. Um, right. Right, like the feeling that is behind what you're doing is really the important thing, yeah. right? As opposed to what it looks like to somebody else that you're doing. Yeah, like mm -hmm. when I was um, when I was in a romantic relationship, for instance, mm -hmm. like um, I was at work and I knew my partner had been having a rough day, so mm -hmm. I got her chocolates on the way home. Mm -hmm. uh, but like that was just me trying to be nice to her it wasn't <laughs> necessarily a romantic like right that <laughs> but you would in do that the context of a romantic relationship it that yeah and the whole the whole concept feels strange and hmm. nebulous dare I say <laughs> dare you say um, <laughs> yeah so, hmm. And then like gender. So um, mm -hmm. as people can probably tell, I'm AMAB. Um, I use mm -hmm. she, her though. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm non-binary leaning towards um, fem, star, um, mm -hmm. fem side of things. Um, okay. And, but yeah, it's, it's hard for me to put a finger on there too. Like mm -hmm. I just, I am me, I guess is the best way I can describe it right I've, like, I've heard that a I, lot from agender folks too just like I'm just me like what is this concept you're trying to sort of shove on to me like just, yeah yeah like a gen gender beyond gender roles and mm. the the idea that certain people feel certain thing certain um positions in society and like right. they they need to act certain ways to do that etc cetera, etc cetera. those sorts of things like I can understand but again mm -hmm. like gender is a feeling like that's meh <laughs> <What>? <laughs> that is such a mood <laughs> eh, what yeah yeah it makes a lot of sense um it's it's difficult I guess to go through and it's almost like in every way, right? In all of your identities, you're coming up against these societal, I guess, expectations or even concepts really of what people are doing in their culture and what they're doing in society, what their roles should be. Um, yeah. And then you're kind of like, well, I get that as why? a concept, but why, what? right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why are we doing it? Um, yeah, yeah it, it makes a lot of sense uh, just as a queer individual, like you come up against those kinds of things a lot, whether you're arrow or you're ace or you're um, bi or polyamorous or uh, agender in this case, like lots of different things. It's really coming up against that, just the, the, the norms in a way or the, the expectations that society has laid out and going just, but have we talked about this? Like, have we, <laughs> is there a reason? Someone is thought this, this was a good, a good yeah. idea at some point, but th 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 did we think about this? Did we think about it? Did, did we think it through? I'm not sure. Yeah, well, it makes it difficult for a lot of people to, I guess, even find out that that's what they're going through. Like for you, you were saying you were in romantic relationships and it seems like you tried, I guess, um, but always sort of well, at it, some point. It was mm. strange, and, mm. and I the the feeling of being broken came up quite a mm. few times, um, like in 
all of my romantic relationships and I had five or six, I'm mm -hmm. 33 now. Um, mm -hmm. So like I had five or six romantic relationships and mm -hmm. late teens, early twenties. And right. barring two mm -hmm. and one of those was when I discovered I was aromantic, like mm -hmm. barring two, everyone left me mm. and I never quite put a finger on why, mm. but mm. when, when I broke up with my now roommate, um, mm -hmm. she, she said something along the lines of um, you felt disconnected like there mm -hmm. was there was there was some romantic thing that she was expecting that I wasn't providing mm -hmm. and like coming out of zero and breaking up with her managed to um, strengthen our relationship overall mm -hmm. but um, also put into context a few things for us right, right. Um, which has been helpful I guess um, mm -hmm. retrospectively mm -hmm. You can kind of look at those experiences, I imagine, and be like, ah, and like with her as well, she can kind of look back on those experiences and be yeah, like, well, this exactly. makes sense. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that exactly. makes a lot of sense. Well, and I'm glad to hear also that, um, and I think this is a good thing for other people to hear, that your relationship in that case strengthened after that, right? There are, um, it's not sort of the end of the world <laughs> necessarily. Yeah, I mean, we've well not necessarily obviously it um it can go south but for us right. like we've been living together for almost 10 years now I nice say. a decade yeah. um if, and I've been out as a row for at least four of those mm -hmm. so yeah yeah that's awesome to hear just you know communicating I guess is what I'm getting from you just Communication your authentic in self. in relationships of any kind is really important, yes. Yes. If you take anything from this chat, um, communicate with your people. <laughs> this seems to be a, a common thing, right? Be, be yes. your authentic self, even if it's scary. Um, be that friends, romantic partners, sexual partners, whatever yeah. the situation is like. Mm -hmm. Communication is key for relationships generally. Right. I remember Nick was saying earlier too, right? Like in any relationship that he goes into, um, one of the first things that he brings up is to talk about aromanticism and to bring that up and to talk about expectations and needs and wants, right? So it's, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be useful for any kind of relationship you have um, in whatever way it changes too. Uh, because relationships don't, even relationships that are labeled sort of the same, <laughs> can be very variable and never Very different internally and very variable over time, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, keeping that in mind and being sensitive to that. Um, oh, yeah, chat definitely agrees. Communication. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Big woo on that one. It's, it's important. Um, and being your authentic self is important, definitely. Um, well, I've got you for, I think, maybe five or six more minutes um, before we take a bit of a break since I had you in early. Um, yeah. So uh, I don't want to drag more of you out, uh, <laughs> especially since it's still the morning time for you. Um, I hope you've eaten breakfast. Um, oh, it's quarter to 11. Okay. It's not so that you, early here. All right. Okay. Well, <laughs> then in that case, I'll stop giving you any sort of... Um, uh, leeway and I'll expect you to be very good at quiplash uh, because you're awake now. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so get I ready. I coffee but I've been up for the whole stream so. <laughs> oh thank you you're the best. Um, yeah I'd, I'd like to I guess close on um, well you mentioned um, the um, Oracle's forums like at the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. Actually how do you pronounce that out of curiosity as, as the admin? How do you pronounce? I pronounce it Orocalypse, but okay. also I have almost never heard it pronounced outside yes. of how I pronounce it. So do we need well, a pronunciation guide? Maybe because I don't know. Well, you're the admin, right? So now I'm t the chat knows that what you say is how it's going to be pronounced, right? So like we oh, can no. take that audio <laughs> clip and just um, 
No, but I'm curious about that because I've I've heard a few comments as well uh, talking about it. Um, and I think it's funny. Aurea had also similar issues when it comes to acronyms and new words and things. There's always mm. a, hmm, how, how uh, should I, these? Yeah. I pronounce it Arocalypse, but I have heard people say Arapocalypse just oh. out of accident. Yeah. Because, um, yeah. Yep, yep. Um, oh, fun fact in the chat that was written by another <laughs> Aurea member. Uh, nearly every member of the team pronounces uh, it differently. Um, in fact, yeah, the way I've been pronouncing it this whole stream is not the natural way I pronounce it. So <laughs> I have to think <laughs> about it every time. Like it's like an Oreo, but with an A, yeah. So or an aura. Or an aura, yes, as well. Um, yeah, yeah. But I feel that I guess, yeah, for the for the forums, right? Um, I'd like to uh, give a plug to it, right? Uh, if people want to um, help Momo um, with keeping that site running, right? Keeping the forum space alive, definitely go and donate if you can. Um, that would be awesome. Um, that is something that uh, I'll be transferring over to Momo shortly <laughs> after the stream. So. Um, We'll figure that out as well on the off-stream techie side. Um, but yeah, is there anything, I guess, any last thoughts you have on anything we've chatted about so far, whether it's the forums or um, the community, um, speaking to any of the arrows here that might be tuned in that uh, you'd like to give, give to? Yeah, um, so mm -hmm. the forums specifically, yeah, any, um, any donations anyone can give are hugely appreciated. Um, mm -hmm. It it really does help. Um, mm -hmm. If if we get enough, I've got a few ideas that I want to do. No um, no no hints right now. But oh, um, okay. yeah, <laughs> like, like I said earlier, like I can maintain the forums, but expanding it really would need outside donations mm. okay. anything people can give is hugely appreciated and it all goes towards maintenance costs i don't take mm -hmm. anything so yeah awesome. absolutely um uh, there was something else i wanted to say but i cannot sure. think right now what it was <laughs> that's okay your coffee is starting to run low i'm Wear sure off. yeah i yes. had it at seven o'clock so oh wow when this yeah. all started and it's 11-ish, you said, or before 11? Yeah, it's um, quarter to 11. Quarter to 11, yeah. So good job. Um, the chat <laughs> is very curious about these ideas for expansion. Um, you will see if Maybe. there are enough funds. <laughs> yes. uh, so. um, but that's um, exciting to hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was there something else you were going to say? Uh, I know that. I couldn't remember what it is now. Uh, right, right. Um, um, so oh, I think that's it. Yeah. Also, I will say that um, beyond this fundraiser, they, you can donate year round to um, the Arocalypse forums. Like it's not necessarily just now. Um, we happen to be putting this event on now, but um, I'm sure Momo is happy to get anything uh, at any time of the year, really, um, because the expenses are like on the monthly basis. Um, yeah for continuing, right? Things that are continuing and are being maintained require yeah, maintenance uh, funds. <laughs> um, yeah, and similarly with, with Oreo, with us, um, it's the same. Um, our donation box is always open in case um, you can't right now, but you're thinking of uh, something uh, in the future, um, go right ahead. Our donation box will always be open. Um, and we always collect as well donations for us and for uh, Arocalypse, the forums, so you can indicate um, who you want that to go to at any time. Um, that's, um, yeah. Just one other thing. Someone yeah. um, meant, uh, geez, I forget who it was, but someone okay. mentioned about, no, uh, um, Stardust. Yeah. Um, they mentioned um, helping out. And if anyone wants to help out mm -hmm. with Arocalypse, but they can't donate, um, one of the other ways that people can help out is as volunteer moderators. Mm. We cycle moderators around so that people don't get worn out as much. 
Um, that was a big problem for me historically. Mm -hmm. right. um, so we we run off of volunteer moderators and we cycle those teams around so that people um, can help out but can also take a break. Mm -hmm. Where can people go to uh, for moderating? Um, um, I will, there is a forum post. I will okay. put a link in chat. Awesome. Um, and I'll get that through to the rest of the chat <laughs> as well. But yeah, if anybody wants to uh, volunteer in any other ways, right, your time is just as valuable as any of your funds, um, if not more valuable. Having more people on a team um, makes the teamwork a lot easier and also keeps people from being worn out, keeps the community running uh, in cases of uh, pandemic times or really intense things happening around the world that we all need support for. So um, yeah, yeah. All right, well, uh, I guess that's it from, from you, Momo. Thank you so much for coming in. That's all right, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's been really great partnering with you and uh, Arocalypse uh, for this event. It's been really fun so far. The chat seems to be loving it and eating it up. So if that warms my heart, warms my <laughs> cold arrow heart, um, that uh, that people are enjoying connecting with different kinds of people who share a lot of their experiences. So thank you for sharing yours. That's all right. All right. Um, now what we're going to do is we are going to uh, pivot over to a break. Uh, since we started with Momo a little early, we're still going to go at 7 p.m. Eastern time for our quick flash game, which hopefully all of you are very excited for. I'm kind of nervous for now at this point because uh, people are so articulate today. <laughs> um, so we'll see how that goes. But in any case, somebody will win um, and somebody will be funnier than me probably. So we can count on it that at least. It will probably not be me now. Okay, based so on our test run. I was dead last <laughs> in our test run. So. That is that is that is true. You had some good answers, um, but some of these people on the team are uh, very hilarious. <laughs> so they are. Uh, yes, um, but who knows? We'll have a bigger voting pool when we have uh, the people in the chat participating. So maybe, maybe your pancakes will win this time. Um, maybe, maybe. Um, but anyway, yeah, <laughs> we're going to pivot over to that. Um, I'm going to actually set up and uh, share my screen to our little break time, uh, little break time slide that we've got so that you know when we're back, once we're back. Um, yeah, we're going to take that 15 minute break or 10 in between 10, 15 minutes until seven, then come back in at seven. We're going to play some quiplash rounds arrow flavored arrow themed quiplash rounds um yeah so thank you again for tuning in for these last three uh, individual sessions and i'll see you in the chaos that will be um quiplash all right see you soon
All right, hi everyone. Uh, apologies that I was sharing some of my computer sound while I was setting things up in the background. So you may have heard a little bit of Quiplash's music and some of the uh, um, button pressing that I was doing, but we should be okay now. So what I'm gonna do is start pivoting over to the game. Um, first, I'm going to thank everybody for coming again, especially if you're here right at the end of the stream and have been here throughout the stream. Um, thanks so much for coming. 
Um, I also want to thank our awesome guests for all of their individual presentations and discussions that they had. If you want to learn more about the people we've had on, you can find them on their social media that they've plugged. Um, yeah, uh, that's it for those sorts of introductions. Now I'm going to let in everybody else and unleash some of the chaos. Um, here we go. There's one, all of them. Excellent. There they come. Hey. Hi, everybody. You're going to just show me. If any don't want to be on camera. Whatever. <laughs> All right. I, I think you're muted by default. So uh, just double check that you've got it. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Wonderful. I was freaking out. I was like, it's seven. Why haven't I been let in? Did I do something wrong? No, no. I got you. Don't okay. worry. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. You are fine. Um, all right. I think we've got everybody here. Um, I want to check. Everyone seems like they can hear me. Yes. Thumbs up. Yep. I guess. Yeah, Momo, you can't thumbs up, but uh, <laughs> as much thumbs up as you can do. Um, well, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, especially if you were on earlier at the beginning, like Nick and Divinity. You're great uh, for coming back in for some games. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen so that you all can see it and so that the chat also and the viewers can see it um, and share my sound as well. There we go. Now, can you see the Jackbox and the code? Code things as well. I cannot see the code. It says press Y to read room code. Oh, interesting. Uh, oh, I can see it. See it. I see it. I am a fool. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, how are you? Uh, oh, Jack. Oh, okay. Right. So for everybody that is uh, here as a viewer who is viewing this stream, you can also go into jackbox.tv. Looks like we have a couple of spots that people will be able to join in. <laughs> I see one person has joined in from the audience um, who's going to be playing with us. I was well, wondering if that was going to happen. <laughs> um, that's all right. I think everybody else is on. Uh, there's me, there's Stardust, Shade, Momo, Nick, and no, we don't have Divinity in yet. I'm right? trying to get in. It's not right. Okay. The person, well, I know who you are. It's excellent. Uh, if, you, if you can um, oh, yeah. right. go out first and then let Divinity in first, uh, mm -hmm. hopefully that oh. should work. Yeah, it's like the first six people that join. Um, yeah, if this doesn't. Oh, somebody work, joined before me. Yes, um, I can uh, reload it as well, and then have only you see and not the uh, the rest of the chat, and then the rest of the chat can join in afterwards. We can try that. Um, yeah, whatever's clever. Um, yeah, let me try that. Uh, <coughs> and because somebody won't sign out. <laughs> there we go. Let me exit that. Stop a share. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the code with you all in chat first here in the Zoom chat. And then I'll share the rest of the code with everybody else once we get in, because y'all are faster than we are, apparently. Um, faster than me. Yes. OK. Well, thank you are for you? joining, being so no. so fast. All right. Oh. Let me get in. I'm and... so good. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So for you all. Um, in the Zoom chat, I've put in the code that you get in. And then once you are all in, I will share my screen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't see nothing. Oh, there it is. Aha. Aha. I'm in. Right, we've got myself, we've got Shadi, we've got Nick, we have Stardust. We have Momo and we have Divinity. Awesome. Okay. Now I will let all of the rest of you join because you're too fast. Uh, let me do that. Share sound. <laughs> all right. For everybody on stream now, thanks for hanging in with that technical part. You can go to jackbox.tv on any of like your devices. If I put my glasses on, I'll like come up with better clips. Good point. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Jackbox TV on any of your devices on your phone. I have mine on my phone because my computer is currently being used up by the stream things. Um, yeah, on your computer as well, on your 
iPad, on your tablets, whatever it is uh, you're using. We'll give you like a couple minutes to, to join in as spectators um, and then uh, we'll get started with some arrow prompts. Um, how are you all, all, all of you guests that have tuned in? I am so excited for this game. <laughs> yes. I've been like, my energy has been so up this entire time because it's like, I started at 3 p.m. I was on the road, so I was watching it on my phone. Oh, wow. Nice. I was listening to Nick and Divinity, like on my phone and then yeah. transferring here. It was just, uh, it's just been such a wonderful day for me. Yay. Just everyone. That's awesome. The cool things do. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll start getting us in. I'm going to load up these prompts. Participants, right? mm -hmm. Participants at the top, right? No, no, just kidding. <laughs> Wait, what's new? It was over there. Are y'all good? Yeah, we're good. We're just trying to see if we can front, like, never mind. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Let me load this up. Here are some prompts uh, that we're going to play. All right. Oh, oh no! I got oh, this. No! <laughs> so did I. Oh, it wasn't us. It was the thing. <laughs> yes, it was the thing. I got disconnected too. Oh my gosh. Hold on, y'all. Oh. I want to make we're sure you great. get in. Yes. And then I get in as well. I want my little moon. Someone got in before I did. So <laughs> we good job, restart. whoever you were. Oh, I got in. Did I select my character? Did I get mine? Are we using the same yes. code? It's a different code now, it seems like. Oh, Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for hanging in. Oh, <laughs> That's why we have technical difficulties. I would be so bummed if I don't get the moon again. Oh. I want to be the poop. You're like the proof so I got. Divinity. It's like I can't see the screen, so I don't have confirmation. All right, <laughs> hold on. Uh, Ace Becca Stardust, I will give you the, okay, just, just, uh, it's like I'm chill. the new code. Oh, wait, did I have the star last time? Who cares? I, I have the star. You had the star. I was like, right, it was something stardust. space related. Everybody yeah. Yeah. I, I think because I was probably the first one. Oh, okay. This is a good start to the chaos, everyone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, will I get to be the first person again this time? I will not. Is everybody in? Do I have to hit everybody's in? Not yet. We no. have okay. still What's Stardust. The, What's the code? The code? I'm going to... Uh, Wait, Nick, can you see if I'm in? Um, I can't see who's in right now. It just says, press this button when everybody's in. Here you go, Stardust. Ah, I can't you. see the screen, oh. so I don't know. Yeah, I will no, get I just... the screen back up the moment Stardust joins in. OK. Now I will share my screen for everyone else. For oh, the I'm first time, audience. Okay. If, oh. if the audience wants to join. That was an emotional roller coaster for me. I'm attached to that moon. <laughs> I'm glad that you got the moon. Um, it said the... sit back and relax, but I can't sit back and relax until I have confirmation. <laughs> okay, now, now you can sit back and relax. Now you've got the moon. Okay. Um, uh, and am I supposed to be? Listen, I know we already like did a tech run because right. I don't know how things work. Um, but am I supposed to use a sit back and relax screen, no. or do I need to press something else? No, I think we're that's waiting it. for. Yeah, we're waiting for the audience to join in, and then it looks like um, it has the everybody's in. So. Oh I'm yeah, should I hit the everybody's in? Not yet. I'm gonna give people a little bit more time to. Join oh yeah, in. The, the the viewers. Yes. Um, gotcha. It looks like we've got 11 people joining us. Um, so 11 more votes. Um, maybe who will have the same sense of humor as me. Um, I've been informed <laughs> by the Aurea team that if I fail, uh, I'm fired. So. <laughs> oh, no. Nice. That's, oh, oh, yeah, no, that's it's awful. It's fine. I I'll saw be. literally one prompt. I have an answer for it, and with my luck, Ooh. I will not get it. <laughs> yeah, I, I put uh, 35 different prompts and five rip flash okay. prompts, which is the last round. Um, so, so we'll probably get in order. <laughs> All right, we're going to give people another 60 seconds to join in if you want to join in. And then after that, somebody's asking, start. How do you tune in? Uh, or yeah. How do you join? Go so to jackbox.tv. 
Um, like it says there, jackbox.tv, you'll enter the room code TKAB, and then your name. It's very chaotic. That's good. We had some like really chill and deep discussions. Now we just really need to unleash the chaos. We gotta end on a high note, right? Yeah, exactly. End on a high note. Um, and it yeah. wouldn't be a virtual event if there weren't like tech difficulties. And? You are very, <laughs> you're very correct. <laughs> All right. It's Ten a good place more have. seconds. We're gonna get nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, Nick, you can hit everybody then. Good luck. Dun, dun, dun. You can join in also at any time as an audience member. Brace yourselves, it's Quiplash 3. You Children can hear them this time. <laughs> I'm Schmitty, and I cannot wait to get quipping. You with me? Didn't make it in the game and want to be heard? Put in that room code and vote in the audience. Oh, you can still join the audience. That's Yep, good. in the corner. Round one. You'll get two prompts on your device to answer any way you please. You'll go head to head with another player's response and everyone else votes on their favorite. Sound easy? That's because it is. Points are scored based on the percentage of people who choose your response. Let's quip. Easy, they say. Yes. <laughs> Oh, a good one already. Oh no! Oh my god. I refuse to think. I just said I refuse to think and here I am thinking. Uh. I still have 50, 52 seconds. Yep, you're good. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I submitted things. Yes. Oh, You're good. Well. You can do it, Dimity. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Finally, let's do some action. Right. The panic. Come up with. <laughs> Starting <laughs> off. <laughs> Same vibes. <laughs> I wonder if this was inspired by earlier. Yeah, we're today. sharing the high point at this point. I'm vibing with the music. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, audience. Hey, hey thank you. Thank you. It's not shiny. Oh, and next is you bitch. It didn't let me. Oh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, this is unfair. <laughs> oh, oh these are good. Could you like put stickers on both sides? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, good point. Like one on each side of the rubber. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Problem solved. Oh no! I didn't answer! Oh no! Oh, the audience over the pool. I was about to click it. I thought I had like 13 seconds. I was wrong. <laughs> All right, people, it's voting time. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I hate this. Okay. Okay. It's hard.
hard when you have funny people um, and they're all funny and, <laughs> and you can't choose. I can't wait. Last time I didn't get to vote. So now I need to just go with my gut. Yes. Oh, nice. Whatever, Divinity. <laughs> You're the winner of my heart. <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> oh. I love that it put the emojis in here too. Uh, that's that's nice. That's great. I didn't know that. I'm gonna yeah. file that away for later. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's funny because it's more than one word. I know. <laughs> I didn't even read it. You say it fast, it's one word. Right. It's a, it's a hyphenated. It's a oh. Hyphenated. oh, this is a difficult one. Oh, no. Like me as a person versus me as an arrow? Like. <laughs> Oh, interesting. Yay! Very interesting. Ooh. <laughs> and oh, now. wait. I thought I got more. <laughs> yeah, the audience that. overruled. The audience. Oh. Hey, everybody. Pick your favorite quip. Oh. This is a real call out. Uh, mm. Oh, come on. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> This is, this is now it's just difficult. <laughs> I'm just, I was like, I close my eyes and pick one. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially. Okay, that's what the audience is for. <laughs> They'll help. Right. Yeah, all of you currently sitting at computers watching yeah. this probably. <laughs> exactly. And that was round one. Let us never speak of it again. On to the school board. <laughs> I agree. Just the past. Nice. Momo. Momo. How did that happen? <laughs> the chat likes you. Okay, I guess. The yeah, audience vibes with you. That's true. More challenging, so the points are doubled. Okay. <laughs> oh gosh. Hmm. <laughs> Oh no! Crap! This is good. This is good feedback. It means I made some good props. <laughs> uh, I have answers, but are they answers that will win? Hmm. That's true. Now you've got even more people to try to win over to your side. You know what? This is gonna follow my heart. <laughs> yes. Really a test of can I type in 70 seconds on my phone? I'm also getting like real oh, seconds left. Use a safety quip if you have to. Like from like high school. Oh, you know, anybody else play? I didn't. Mm. Oh, no. Hey, what about high school? Okay, here's where oh. the fun starts. <laughs> it will, like, I'm sorry. It goes, oh, does yeah. it? I hope so. I feel like I was a sellout for like one of my answers. <laughs> <laughs> Me Whoa. as well. Punch in your vote. Two very different vibes here. Very different. <laughs> <I know. laughs> I literally tried to like put both answers just to see what would happen. <laughs> oh, did it not read it or what? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> 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 
Damn, big points for the year. Yes. Let's see the next one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now it's good for you. Oh, the emojis. You did it. Oh. <laughs> that looked great. How do I pick? Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, okay. I'll oh, say nice. pretty evenly split. Ooh. Let's keep it going. I like yours, Momo. <laughs> very, very, very sexy. Ah, they're both so good. <laughs> It's just one's punchy and one is just the truth. Uh, <laughs> but which one's which, Shadi? I'm not sure. I know. Which one? All right. I want to know. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. We will find out. We vote. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Come on! Oh! oh Moving right along. Get well, of course. <laughs> Here's the fun part. Pick your favorite known. whip. I love it when people give the same, essentially the same answer. Then it's like, <laughs> I don't know, which is more aesthetically pleasing to me? <laughs> there you go. Do you want the one with the emoji and the, um, the pun? The pun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, it seems like bisexual puns over here, serving them up all day. Excellent. <laughs> Again, it would not be an A spec event without some puns. It's true. Period. It's true. <laughs> oh, right, interesting. I'm just going to sit here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you stare at it long enough, an yeah. answer will come to you. Right? It's like, I thought we were trying to be funny. This is just earnest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Yay! I'm leaving. Y'all, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good <laughs> one, Nick. <laughs> it's just... That's what I mean. I'm finding a subset of people that find me funny. And we're going to start a new Facebook group. Choose your favorite. So, new Facebook group. You're great. Oh, yeah. I like how both neither ended with no punctuation. <laughs> no, but it's clickbait. We don't have time for punctuation. Exactly. Wow. Oh, oh, barely. Barely. Wow. Yeah, that was when I was I felt like a sellout. I was like, this is just this is just me saying frogs for frogs. Oh, no, that was good. <laughs> I support you. Yes, the underdog are coming back. Step right up to the final round. Oh, the final round. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, three, three lines. Separate. I remember how to play awesome. this one, right? You know I'm gonna overthink it. Big pressure. Of course. <laughs> so each line is a single word, y'all. Let's remember that from last time. <laughs> Yo, you play how you wanna play, I'll play how I want to. Uh, wait, is it one word per thing or one oh. thing for each of the three? Uh, one three. word per thing. It's all one answer, but one word per thing. There you go. Shada has spoken. At least based off what they told us at the beginning. Let's <laughs> uh. follow my heart. Mm -hmm. Are those the three words? Because that is hilarious. That is four <laughs> words. So that is, that is where the comedy comes from, but no. <laughs> Oh no. Like three 
three words, like one phrase. Like one word that's funny to a, a romantic three times, like three different words, three individual words that are each funny on their own to a romantics. Oh, okay. I don't know. Whatever. We'll just. Looks like we all did it differently. And you know oh, what? Okay, that's valid. <laughs> yes. That's the Arrow experience. Oh, we all no. did it differently. We did it last time and it kind of worked. We'll, we'll do it again this time and it'll kind of work again. Yeah. So. Uh, four, three, oh two, my God. one. <laughs> Yo, that's trash. That's oh. that is super well, I'm not proud of my answer, but here we are. All right. It's OK, I neither am I. I didn't get to finish. Four, <laughs> <laughs> ah! He's your favorite. <laughs> Darn it. Ah! They're both funny and different. I know, no, I'm sitting here. I, I, really I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm just. Oh. Oh. It's the misspelled frog that does it for me. I can't see that <laughs> And so it spreads. <laughs> and so it spreads, yes. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Oh, damn, that's close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Why are you all on the same wavelength? <laughs> yes. It's like a no-brainer. No matter who wins, we all win. Exactly. <laughs> That's what that one is. Exactly. This music is a vibe. It is, right? It like goes hard. Right. <laughs> oh, nice. <my> <laughs> Turn around on us. Um. <laughs> oh, I so rarely win. I must luxuriate in it. <laughs> the fun part. Pick your favorite quip. I like these. I They're color words. <laughs> funny. Coming from different places. They're both funny and wholesome. That's like she's turning away potatoes. No vacancy potatoes. You're not welcome here. You got nice face. <laughs> oh, interesting. Oh, Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, thank you. Very interesting. <laughs> Great job. No, I feel like you got an advantage writing all these questions. I did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can say I didn't think about it, but I don't Great. know if you believe it. <laughs> oh, no way! No way! Oh my god! Yes! Nice! Quip Lash! Yeah. Oh, yay! Thank you! Oh. Oh. The waffle. I bin. would like to thank my brain. <laughs> right. Um, I would like to thank <laughs> frogs and dragons for existing. Uh huh. And I would like to thank, I don't know. <laughs> You're prepared for the like thank you, fundraiser for existing for giving me like good reference humor. <laughs> we definitely know the baby said potatoes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, thank you all for coming into play. Uh, this was fun. Um, you want to go for another round? I could do one more. Everybody else yeah. is done. I'm done. All right. Let's do one more round and then uh, see how that goes. Um, I would like a rematch. Oh, I see. Dun, dun, dun. She's coming for us. Okay. They're coming for us. Okay. I think you can just do play uh, rematch, right? Thing we call yeah. Quiplash. I think that's what we're doing, in fact. Quipsylvania. Me? Oh, I'm shitty. I knew that already. Okay. And now, round one. You're going to get okay. points based on the percentage of votes you get, so don't hold back. You've had a practice, you know. Now you can really get into it. <laughs> um. 
Hmm. I wrote these prompts and yet they stumped me. Um, because the first one I got is literally something I say in my head all the time. Oh, and the no. second one I got was a pun. So oh, no. win or lose, I'm just happy to put these beautiful Stop. words out there. <laughs> Thank you, Shadow. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. I don't know, it's going slow, I, don't, I can't tell. No time. <laughs> You're over here at 17 seconds. <laughs> She's like, three, two. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Aw, that's so cute. Uh-uh. Y'all using the frog as joke at this point, I think. Y'all just like, no frogs, <laughs> don't get the boat. <laughs> we like frogs. Sometimes you just gotta do a people pleaser. They're green, <laughs> right? They're green. Like I said, it's reference humor. Like the last four hours, it's been frogs, frogs, frogs. And I'm not angry about it. <laughs> All right, check this out. Thanks. <laughs> I'm gonna just write frogs for the rest of my answers. <laughs> decisions, decisions. Choose your favorite. I like that. Romance is like salad. But I like salad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love salad. Me too. Have you ever oh, been no. to Samaya? It's the best place ever. <laughs> it's still something I say all the time, though. Good job. <laughs> yeah, I was like, as soon as I got that, I was like, ooh, I can spread the word. <laughs> Yo, no, frogs, please. Well. Pick your favorite. <laughs> Like How one. many of these responses are just gonna be frogs? That's what I'm saying. Like, come on, guys, we're trying to play a game here. I know Maybe I, I should have banned frogs. I am also <laughs> guilty of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't win it, the frog. In my no. defense, I romantically what? Anyway, and here we have. Where did it come from? Where did it come from? Okay, everybody, pick your favorite quip. Oh, these are cute. Uh, <laughs> oh, I want to choose both of them. I know. <laughs> That's so cute. Yo, these are ideas. Like, is somebody in the chat, if you want to make oh. this, like, right here. Who's right? promoting it? Where are app developers? Right, app developers. There's been a few yeah. attempts at friendship apps, actually. They typically... Ooh, yeah. Fall apart, uh, unfortunately. I stand by my pun. It's great. Hey, what's next? Yeah. And now, pick your favorite. Yeah, relatable. Very relatable. Tough choice. Now we're just on to just real questions. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's like we're. <laughs> Yeah, we have closed the frog portion. We're now in the real talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Next one. <laughs> oh! Tell me to pick the one you like best. Nice. Hmm. Just gonna be honest, 
you know? Yeah. Oh. Yes. I'm just gonna be honest. <laughs> this is the real section, right? Right. <laughs> and it's like all of these answers were given at the same time, and yet it put the frogs in the front. <laughs> yeah, somehow it worked out. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was a good one. Really. Nice. That was round one. Reminder that those all go on your permanent record. Let's see the scores. Hey. All right, should I ban frogs for round two? So if round one was an appetizer, I will try to be better. About that. Right, right. I mean, they always they give you a safety quiplash. It's like frogs are just the safety frogs quiplash. Is the arrow safety quip. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> frogs is the arrow safety quip. Um. I feel as I don't know if anybody's gonna get that, but it's from me. Some jokes are just for me. <laughs> <laughs> I like that approach. Oh no. This one frogs would actually be a legit good answer. Oh no, but I'm, I'm not gonna put frogs. it. I'm not gonna put it. It wasn't technically banned. I'm not gonna put it. I'm just saying I'll point it out after the after people vote. But it's like this one. Frogs would legitimately be a good answer. Okay, it'll be the winner in our hearts, right? When it comes to that one. <laughs> we got like 27, 25 seconds, okay. Yeah, I made it, I was the last two over thinking. Yeah! <laughs> You did. I did. I did. I did. I already submitted, I did. does not mean my answers are good. <laughs> mm. Oh, five seconds. Oh. No, I don't know if mine went through. I don't think it did. Whatever you had typed, oh. we'll go. We'll be sent. Okay, okay good. Because I was looking for an emoji. That's all was left. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is so oh funny. my, that's terrible. Who's away? Just stop. Just say. <laughs> <laughs> what advice sometimes? I don't even lie. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> the only advice. My phone's so slow, it takes forever for me to get to emojis. Sorry, oh, I have done the same. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Nice start of Next up. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Very <Sarah>, different vibe. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say <laughs> like yes and also yes, you know. <laughs> yes and then yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, right <laughs> after each other. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And next. It's like, do we go for the humor or do we go for the truth? And they're both good. Oh, I'm on now. All right. Dude. Whoa. <laughs> uh, damn. Nice. Oh, mine's going slow. I can't see who won. Ah. Okay, mine was a Muppets reference if nobody saw that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I probably won't win, but this is for me. <laughs> it's for the Muppets fans. The, the Menomina song. Like, yes. aim out to normativity at the beginning sounds sort of like it. Yeah. So I was like, new Arrow song, Arrows. Are we going to co op that one too? Um... <laughs> it's just the beginning of the, the Citadel sound. It's a little meh sound that's like I'm enjoying that a lot. Sounds like clown pointing. 
That sounds kind of cat like. <laughs> Mine is so good because I legitimately forgot right. Valentine's Day was Valentine's Day the day of. Yep. And I was that like, seems to be a thing. <laughs> All of us no, 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 and it's like, I went to the star and I saw it. And I was like, oh, yeah. Now pick your favorite. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> I'm just happy that it's not frogs. Right. <laughs> yes. It yeah, was a good decision to ban frogs. Yes. <laughs> we love them, of course. Yes, yes. But make it a bit more challenging. <laughs> right, right. They're special. We can't always use cords. Um, we have to keep them. Hey, I won. That's the one that I thought frogs would be a good answer for. <laughs> I was right like, after dang. Divinity said, like, oh, I'm glad it's not frogs. Uh, yeah, I was like, dang, <laughs> pictures of, like pictures of frogs, okay. frog figurines. Now it gets real. Pick your favorite. I mean, I yeah. Know, who do I pick? I don't know which one vibes with you more. Right. Fine. What's in your gut? <laughs> But after today, I do really want to start collecting frog figurines. That's what today is made for. Oh no! I'm not going to because I don't have the space, but I want to. Redeemed. The most amusing thing to me is that as a kid, I had a really big frog figurine. Hey, oh no! Really? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I love the Muppets, so lots of Kermit the Frog oh, for me. So that was always it. It was meant to be a moment. I'm at eight. Yay! I'm in the lead. I'm glad I didn't choose frogs. Because I knew it would be a bad idea. I just. Yeah. All right. Are we back to the weird three word thing? We are. We are. Oh, my, I'm like waiting for my phone to do it. Okay, now yeah. see, this is, this prompt is why, uh, how much time we got? Uh, you've got 74 seconds. seconds. Oh. 74, that's yours saying, okay. Yeah, I'm a few <laughs> seconds behind on my screen. Dang. Yeah. I figure it probably does that uh, through all of the sharing of the screen and then through the screen as well. Uh, there's probably a delay. It looks like the audience is really quick to vote from what I've been seeing. <laughs> um. Watching everyone deep in thought is very interesting. I'm just watching the little faces, the emojis they're making. Oh yeah, they're dancing. How, How much time do I have left? 18, 17, 16, 15 seconds. Tick tock, time's almost up. <laughs> Ooh, you can do it. I wanted the party. Five seconds. Throw it. Nice. Let's get ripping. I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> Very valid. Nice. Oh, it's saying please wave through the players. Okay, mine's being weird. Who's your favorite? <laughs> oh, my computer was doing so well earlier. Oh no. It's okay, tech always has to go wrong at some point, oh, right? If I'm only a few seconds behind, I will take that. That's fine. All right. Oh, I just realized I made a typo. Oh, well. Ah, the audio. Oh, wow. Aha. Interesting. Very. Very. Yes. Yes. What <laughs> communicate? <laughs> Pick your favorite quip. Oh man. Aww. All right, Shade, which one of these is you so I can vote for the other person? <laughs> oh, you saw me? <laughs> what did I do? To You're get winning. Such, You're winning. so far ahead. <laughs> to get such specific ire. Let me have this. <laughs> now, my answer is so obviously me when you'll see it. You won't even have to ask, okay? <laughs> so just Whatever. I told you I gave up. <laughs> uh. 
Three lessons we learned today. Mm. Frogs. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, choose your favorite. I was also going to go with a frog joke for this, but I was like, somebody else is going to, the other person's going to do it. Let me go different. <laughs> If y'all want to be petty and vote against me, I obviously put space. <laughs> it's like, I, it's like, like the other <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would have voted for Nick's answer too. So that's not even a thing. You've been redeemed, I'll Nick. I the frog hate campaign so I can come in at the end. <laughs> it works. It did. I think Nick won. You play the ball. <laughs> won the first round and to Nick who came in clutch right at the end here and deceived all of us. Shut up, shut up. How did you do it? What was your score? I know that's, I know that. Shut up, just shut up, okay? <laughs> Don't forget who whooped everybody in the practice round. Ooh. There's no record of that, I don't know what you I took a screenshot. <laughs> there, there was no Oh no. <laughs> All right, well, thank you all for playing. Um, I'm officially thanks. retired forever from Whiplash. Uh, okay. <laughs> you, you've had your run and you're happy with it. Oh, and with, when you're on top, I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well. Retire while you're a champion, huh? <laughs> okay, well, thank you again, um, all of you for coming and also all the people who are watching. Uh, <laughs> For coming and and getting into the the frog business um and all of those things so I didn't expect the stream to go this way but you know that's fine it's healthy um yeah if you want to learn more about the people that are on the stream they've all uh given out their uh socials but if you want to do that again um feel free we can start up with nick and divinity and then uh go uh let us know where you can be found but officially Divinity on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Okay. All the same username. Great. Oh, and um, you can support my business at lulugadi.com. That's L-U-L-U-G-A-U-D-Y. Whoops. Dot com. <laughs> the whoops isn't in there. <laughs> no, it's not right. I thought I was going to do it right this time. Did it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm at Nick Hampshire. Remember, there's no C in there. It's N-I-K. Uh, mm -hmm. Mostly on Instagram. You can put uh, a C if you want. That, but that's not arrow uh, specific. <laughs> My YouTube is relatively arrow specific. So Nick Hampshire on uh, YouTube, it's also like titled uh, being a romantic while not asexual. Um, yeah, if you uh, want, hit me up. I have uh, videos on there. If you guys have any recommendations for topics you'd like me to address, I'm certainly open to doing that as well. Um, and remember, if you're using the word queer in your YouTube comments, it's most, most likely they're getting censored and people mm -hmm. can't respond to them. Because um, yeah. that's been happening on my YouTube. So, um, but yeah, find me for Arrow stuff on YouTube and everything else on Instagram. Uh, awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. It's been great. Yeah, thank you very much for coming. <laughs> I guess, Shade, we can go next with you. Uh, okay. Um, I'm Shade. I'm LMO Creates on Twitter. Um, Twitter is my main social media thing. I use social media very sparingly. Um, but yeah, also on my Twitter, my pin tweet is to my email newsletter. Um, it's the Shade Oyama, the official Shade Oyama Quinoa fan club, um, the fan club newsletter. Um, that's Thanks. literally all it is. It's just the email newsletter. And also my podcast, you can find information about all of them at crownprincessproductions.wordpress.com. You can find information about fairy tale tidbits, um, excerpts from that podcast were what I had today and information about my mermaid podcast. Uh, come on in the water's fine. It's the mermaid anthology podcast every May. I share mermaid, I create and share mermaid stories. And this year it's gonna be space mermaids. Yes. We're excited. I had a poll, I couldn't figure out what to do next. We were like space mermaids, so. You ran with That's it. That's next. Awesome, um, we'll go with A Speck of Stardust next. 
Yeah, I'm aspec underscore stardust on Twitter, and my blog is aspec of stardust.wordpress.com. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome. And then Momo, uh, I guess we can find you on Eurocalypse uh, or other yeah, so socials. Yeah, so the forum is eurocalypse.com. Um, you can get in contact with me about that at contact at eurocalypse.com or momo at momo.lgbt for personal stuff. Awesome. Um, and then we had Caitlin on earlier uh, and she didn't make it into the group session, but uh, she's the arting ace uh, on Twitter and also the arting ace pretty much on any other socials. I think she mentioned Tumblr um, and also sparingly on Instagram. So you can find her there. Um, yeah, thanks again, everybody, for coming and participating and uh, being very enthusiastic about beating each other up in virtually. Um, that was great. Um, and also for, you know, your great discussions and your creative works, all of those, they were really awesome to, um, to get to interact with. Um, for all the viewers, you can look out for this video soon with captions uh, for anyone who might have missed it um, or who uh, weren't able to follow along for whatever other reason. Um, we'll also make a total announcement uh, for the fundraiser tally. Right now, we're looking uh, at uh, over 300 that we broke, which is really awesome. Thank you so, so much to everybody that donated. Um, you're fantastic. You're really what keeps uh, all of us growing and improving and running. Um, so thanks again for all of you. If you've got any feedback about the event, uh, you can let us know by email, um, Aurea, contact at aromanticism.org. Um, or any of our regular contact spaces, some of our social media. Um, yeah, finally, I want to give a huge shout out to the rest of the Aurea team who's been with me through this entire process, uh, <laughs> doing stuff in the background, doing the stream, uh, sending things out, being in the chat as well. They've been wonderful. Um, uh, yeah, with that, we've come to a close today, I think. Thanks for, thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, happy Aerospec Awareness Week. That's Woo, we did it, we made it through. Um, a little extra Aerospec Awareness Week for Momo's end at least. Um, yeah, thanks Thanks very much everyone. Um, yeah, cheers. <laughs> I'll just wait. Thank you, facilitating. Thank you everybody. <laughs>